And look to uh, kick it in. Now he's double teamed. And he may just have to force it back out to midfield. And he does to Chinapu. Chinapu ahead. Trying for Savage. And it's picked off by Tattoo. Look out. Early burst by the sidekick star. Now under control. And the ball kicked away from behind by Drago. Who now heads off the floor. Long pass downfield to Chapman. Who had a couple of goals uh, in the weekend in Dallas. His shot actually more of a centering pass off the boards. Handled very nicely and cleanly by Sobieski. Chris, nice job by Savage on that play before the Blast got that last shot. Savage had a was beaten by a step by Tattoo. He had to go back with all he had to get in front of Tattoo to play defense. Don't forget, Tattoo has to play defense on Savage. They can get out of position very easily. Well, Tattoo is dropped by Furphy, and there's going to be the first foul of the game as Keith Furphy and his uh, aggressiveness to get to the ball also undercut Tattoo. So there's your first foul of the game. And uh, you'll see clearly on the replay as uh, Furphy comes up, he just slides his right leg in on Tattoo and drops him. I think it's a pretty tough call. He marked the ball, he got the ball, and it seems to me if you get the ball, you're, you've got the right to go ahead and hit the player. Baltimore with the ball now. Freddie Thompson, and there's the second foul as Wes McLeod goes down. And they call the foul on Freddie Thompson. Chris, the last time Dallas played here, Kenny Cooper was absolutely irate because of the officiating. He felt that the blast was getting the short end of all the calls, and the early going here, it looks like it hasn't stopped. Well, quickly, two fouls to none. Paul Child onto the floor now for Baltimore. Timmy Whitman tries to clear the zone. Can't. Easy save by Manning. And as always, Manning, one of the most aggressive goalies in the league, looks to get it clear. Across the red line, Perfect. With a right foot off the boards, cleared in front by Dallas, and now the sidekicks attempt to counterattack. Child was in good position, but McLeod came over and cut off the ball. Nice defense by Dallas. William Milano. And now we're going to get a two-minute penalty. And they're looking over at the blast bench. Hey, this might be a bench penalty on Baltimore. Unbelievable. Three calls in the first two minutes of this quarter of this very important game, all of them against Baltimore, and we're in the Baltimore arena. Very hard to figure. Well, I think the frustration of those two quick early fouls must have prompted somebody to say something over on the Baltimore bench because the official looked over there when he pulled the card and pointed in that direction. We're waiting on a, an, an announcement. minutes on sportsmanlike conduct. Out of the penalty, 156. Paul Child will serve the penalty in the uh, box. Unsportsmanlike conduct called on the blast. So they're going to have to fend off an early Dallas power play. Exactly where they don't want to be as they set up that power play for Dallas. Watch Doc, La Doc, Lawson. Doc Lawson on the far side. He has got a tremendous right foot. He's the guy they like to get set up for the shot. Dallas, four for 13 in these situations so far in the series. Much better than Baltimore's rather lackluster, two for 11. Tattoo against Stankovic. Touch to the middle, shot off the glass. Going to be in play. McKenzie tries to uh, square out and clears the ball, but only out past the red line. Baltimore will play very aggressively in its uh, man down defense. They put a lot of pressure on the ball outside. That shot goes over the glass, so it'll be Baltimore's ball. Actually, Chris, early in the season, they were a lot more high pressure. Lately, they've been dropping back to a 1-3 situation. They want to cover Tattoo in that target area, and that's why he moved out. He started on the target. They covered him in there. He moved out to the top to get the ball so he could control the ball, and now he's a feeder rather than a shooter, although that time he got the loss in time for him to take a shot. 37 seconds has elapsed in the... Uh, Penalty being served by Child. Baltimore with a ball, and it's a long pass up to Stankovic. He's ridden off the ball, and a foul is called. Mike Stankovic, a very key player for the Blast. He's a leader on this team, can do so many things so well for Kenny Cooper. Out the first two games with an injury, back last game, and here he is in this game, very much dependent on for success. Baltimore with the ball, Stankovic into the zone, double team, slides it back to Savage. Whitman off the boards, down to McKenzie, and Dallas takes it away. One minute left to go in the Baltimore penalty. Twelve minutes to go here in the first quarter. Milano now brings it up slowly at midfield and brings it in against Whitman. Slides it off to the left to David Stride and back to Milano at the top. Milano again to Stride. He'll unload. Blocked away by the defense. Over to Lawson. Lawson shoots. Blocked. 
over the glass by Scott Manning. Chris, you see the blast packing it in. Again, Tattoo started on the target area inside the box. He moved out because the defense is packing it in very tight. He doesn't have a chance to get the ball. They want him to touch the ball, so he comes out so he can get the pass and then become a feeder. Milano, Carpin, Stride, Tattoo, and Lawson on the field for Dallas. Stankovic, McKenzie, Savage, and Whippen fronting Scott Manning in the blast goal. Milano will trigger from the corner out to Lawson. And Whitman will be the runner. He'll do all the legwork up top, and if he gets tired, they'll replace him if they can. Stride at the top to Milano over in the corner. Look out. Lawson off the bar. It's goal! Tremendous shot. Lawson played it perfectly. He came in. They had to respect Lawson's shot. They went to play it, and Mark Carpoon put that shot right in. A deflection off the boards. They couldn't have played it more perfectly, and what a bad situation for the Blast to be in. Only four minutes gone in the first quarter. Watch Lawson come in. They've got to respect his shot, so he takes it off the boards. Bounces right back out. Nothing that Manning can do about that shot. That has to be taken before it comes off the boards. Well, Carpin came from the weak side, broke through the box, and the ball was centered very nicely off the boards by Lawson. And an easy Dallas goal. And a very shaky beginning for the blast here in front of the home thing. In front, knocked away by the defense. And pushed back out towards midfield. Stankovic will clear it all the way back into the Baltimore zone to Manning. He's going to have some problems here. And uh, Fani gets away from the pressure. Dallas, very high pressure in the Baltimore zone. And a shaky moment there for the blast. We saw Scott Manning do that against... Uh the Cleveland Force when they are down here it cost him a game. He's got to get that ball up. He admits he's not one of the better keepers in the league when it comes to using his feet. He almost got in trouble there. Shinapu now being marked at midfield. Slides it ahead to Stankovic. Stankovic, nice move inside the red line. Look out, shot. Blocked away by the defense. The third block, and the ball now comes up into Sobieski's hands. Wes McLeod got the left foot on it. He was positioned perfectly. It was almost like two goalies for Dallas. Nice shot by Stankovic. Deflected by McLeod. Dallas now back on the attack. Clearly the aggressive aggressors so far in the game. And scoring on a power play, uh, play goal by Carpoon and leading one to nothing. Real character test for the Blast, Chris. They've really been handled by Dallas the last three games. Dallas winning two of them. And you just can't keep it that emotional high as long as the Blast has over the years. They live and die on that emotion. And right now they're having a tough time getting fired back up for those emotional wins that they're so characteristic of. Well, Cooper wanted the lead so badly in this game, but he has not gotten it. Playing from behind at home. There's Chapman. His pass to Drago, and Drago lets it go, and it winds up. Two on two, Dallas. Milano across the line. Tries to shoot, look out! Shot blocked in front by Manning. Follow-up try by Tattoo over the glass. That was all Scott Manning. Beautiful play by Tattoo to Milano. Scott Manning had to take perfect position to knock that one down. Milano got a rocket shot off, and Manning was right there. Take a look at it. Milano comes down, he got it from Tattoo, pulls it back, beats McKenzie. He's got the right foot and the seam. Manning perfectly positioned. If he had hit the ball anywhere but where he did, it was going to be in the net. But an excellent move by Milano to beat a double team in front. And here's another look at it. He simply stopped. Whitman couldn't put on the brakes. And then he was in position to get the good shot. Whitman came on the back side. McKenzie didn't shade the other side enough. And a beautiful play to get the shot even off. A little mix up down uh, outside the Dallas box. Sidekicks come up with it. Clearing pass. Picked off by McKenzie. And I don't know who he was passing to, but here comes the sidekicks again. Tremendous pressure. And Child runs him off the ball. Moreland had thoughts about taking the shot, and Child came up and picked it off. McKenzie down into the zone to Child in the corner. Is headed off the ball. Comes back out to the red line. Shinapu, the guy with the most explosive shot in the league. That time he explodes one right up into the popcorn vendor's lap in the second row. Chris, when you take a look at the stats for the playoff series, Richard Chinapu is taking more shots per game than he did during the regular season. He's just getting less effect from those shots. He's had a problem with his leg. I think this game, more than any of the games preceding it, he feels more 100%, more at ease, more like he did during the regular season. And we look for him to be a key if the Blast is going to win this one. He's going to need knee surgery. He's hoping to postpone it, of course, until the playoffs are over. He says it's about 90%. That's a, as you said, it's about as good as he's going to get this year. An anxious moment here for Dallas as Sobieski was out of the net. Baltimore can't sustain the pressure, however. And now we're going to get a foul 
on Chinapu for knocking Vanderbeck down, and that's the third foul on the blast. One against Dallas. Dallas leading 1-0. Nine minutes to go, first quarter. There they are, 3-1. 3-1, and of course, that's not fitting into Kenny Cooper's plan. He wants to put high pressure on him. This foul's not up. He can't do it. Also, the one-goal lead, he can't do it. Now well, Vanderbeck leaves his feet, winds up in Manning's hand. Poor outlet pass picked off by Dallas. McLeod has it and begins to weave his way back towards the Dallas bench where he finds a man coming out of the floor. Kevin Smith now drops it into the Baltimore zone and scoots off the field. Stankovich will bring the ball up the floor for Baltimore as the blast also gets a line change. Drago, I think he was trying to pass it off the boards to Chapman. It didn't work, and again, Dallas with the ball. Milano needs some help, drops it back. McLeod now and Lawson. Dallas out playing Baltimore by tons the most here so far in the first quarter. Definitely way ahead in minutes of possession. The Blast have to get some shots off, but they have to contend. And Baltimore has passed very, very poorly so far. Here's Tattoo against Savage. Shoots blocked by Savage. Chapman comes up with the ball, punches it out, picked off by Moreland. Across the red line, shot blocked by Stankovic. Chapman now with the ball. And they call a foul. Pass ahead. Handled by Sobieski. Yeah, again, Baltimore has not been on the mark with its passes. And there goes Tattoo. He's Chapman. <laughs> he's grimacing. It looks like he might have had an injury there. I guess uh, I they may be showboating a little bit, trying to pull that penalty. We'll take a look at it here. I think he kicked him in the shin, if the truth be known. Boom, there you go. I'm Chapman got him, down. and Chapman gave up his right shoe in the act. And we're going to get a timeout here with 7.32 remaining in the first quarter as a very sore tattoo limps to the Dallas bench. At this time of the year, Leaf, you know, I've said this before, these guys' legs are so beat up that, uh, well, you know, anytime you, if you run into a table in the middle of the night, that thing will hurt for two weeks. These guys are literally running into tables every game they play, and those bruises don't go away. So have got you, some bruises that really have been there for weeks, the sort of deep-set bone bruise types, and when you get one on top of the other, you're right, very painful. Have a close look at that shin Point. injury right off Tattoo. Boom, right in there. Chapman trying to get the ball, missed it by about four feet, and uh, Tattoo got the worst of that one. Point. The blast just not looking right. They definitely don't have the fire that I know Kenny Cooper was looking for. They're not coming out. They're coming out a little tentative as if they're conceding that energy level to Dallas, and they're going to find themselves in trouble if they can't step it up one more notch. Tentative is a good word, and their passing just is not crisp. Kenny Cooper has coached for years on a one-touch, or at the most two-touch, passing pattern. You want to touch the ball and then pass the ball. And so far, they've been passing mostly to green shirts, and I imagine that's part of what Kenny is discussing with them during this uh, first time out of the game. Chris, there are three target men in uniform for the blast. Child, Chapman have been playing so far, but you've also got Davey McWilliams on the bench. Now, Davey McWilliams is the leader in six of nine offensive categories for playoffs for the blast. He's a very heady, full of heart, Playoff contender, as we see Chapman is having a heck of a series, by the way, four goals. Yeah. But McWilliams is going to be a real emotional lift off that bench sometime in this first half. Chapman's also in the box, two minutes for tripping, so that was an expensive assault on Tattoo's highly prized shin bone. And the sidekicks with another power play opportunity. They converted the first, and Baltimore could be in a very deep hole here early in this game. Milano outside, pressured by Whitman, slides it to Tattoo. He runs by Stankovic into the corner, shot in front. Carpoon took a took a shot at it, but his leg spun right over the top of the ball. Dallas, nonetheless, with possession and a minute 20 to go on the penalty. I think maybe these foul calls have the blast being a little bit tentative on body contact. McKenzie had a chance right there to mark that ball. He let it go. Stride now on the left wing. Back out to the point man, Milano. Now Lawson. He's the guy who set up the first Dallas goal. Cross, field, pass, stride. He's going to unload. Blocked in front. Good save by Manning, whose vision was obstructed by Carpoon coming through the box. Milano now to his left, over to stride. 53 seconds to go in the penalty. The blast in that 1-3 defense. There'll be a chase around front. Stankovic just relieved Whitman. Three guys behind him. Look out. They got stride free here in the box, and Tattoo is dropped as he tries to go by Stankovic. That'll be the fourth foul on Baltimore. 
So even if the Blast survives this power play, they may wind up having to survive another one before the period's over because they're two fouls away from getting another penalty. There's Tattoo flying through the air with the greatest of ease. Lawson at the red line. Slides it across the stride, 38 on the uh, clock. You can see the 1-3 there. Here's Stride, and a nice takeaway by McKenzie. The Blast tries to fast break. Whitman out in front. Mack will never get it to him. Drops it off into the corner. Whitman chases it, and the ball is cleared to Sobieski. 22 seconds left in the penalty, and this should be Dallas's last shot on this particular power play chance. Milano, Tattoo. Tattoo down on his knees, slides it back to Milano. Now... Try, or Milano in the corner, out in front, shot off the glass. Another shot over the glass by Doc Lawson. And the Blast apparently have dodged the bullet. And they were lucky, too. The first shot by Lawson deflected off somebody. It was so fast we couldn't tell who it was. But that was the only reason that thing didn't find the net. And then he gets the rebound and pokes another one toward Manning. Manning absolutely overjoyed and went over the glass. Take a look at this now. Goes over to Lawson. Lawson's going to just crank it up. And fire, it'll deflect off somebody. We'll see it. Maybe Stankovich in tight. Comes back out. Lawson takes yet another shot high over the glass. Nothing but offense for Dallas so far. The Blast back on their heels wondering what's going to happen next. Well, Baltimore has had to spend almost four minutes of the period defending against the extra man. Scott Manning in goal tonight. He's got his lucky New York Giants T-shirt on under his game jersey. He's also sporting a new haircut. He's got a brand new baby daughter named Tate who I'm sure is not watching the game tonight, could probably care less who's playing. Her daddy can tell her about it years from now. McKenzie slides it ahead. See this? There's nobody there. That's a sloppy pass. Right in front. This is very uncharacteristic for a Baltimore team. They're really wound up tight. Look at this. Pass to Furphy. It's behind him. Furphy collides. Over to Chapman, back to Furby, and the ball comes free as McKenzie tries to come up with it. Still in the corner, and now we've got a foul. This will go against Dallas. It'll be the third on the side kicks. Chris the is the Blast will get a free kick. This has got a game where they need somebody, one of their veterans, to step forward and take charge for the Blast. We'll take another look at this foul call on Dallas. Grabbing there, holding the jersey. McKenzie goes down. Third foul on the side kicks. But the Blast definitely need one of those top five scorers that haven't really come through other than... Uh, Andy Chapman and Furphy, as you see the foul situation, four and three. They need somebody to come through. Stankovic seems like the likely candidate. He's a guy that thinks he can be a world beater almost every game. They need somebody like that to come through and take charge of the game for the blast. 4.51 to go, first quarter. Hope you're enjoying the game on Home Team Sports, the channel you cheer for, and for all of our friends back in Dallas and Home Sports Entertainment. You folks in Dallas, don't tell the papers what's happening because they're not going to know. It's unbelievable. It's hard to believe that in a city with two great newspapers like Dallas, as Dave McKenzie gets ready to come on now as a sixth attacker, and we said that Kenny Cooper might do this, but we thought he'd do it only if he had a one nothing lead. But he obviously wants to shake his club up. So this is a bold move by Kenny Cooper, down one nothing. He has pulled goalkeeper Scott Manning and gone to a six-man attacker with Dave McKenzie. McKenzie triggered a blast comeback on Sunday in which Chinapu scored twice to erase a 3-1 deficit. But this is a gutsy move in this situation. McKenzie chips it all the way down the floor and out of bounds. And I hope the crowd can recognize the, the gutsy move that Kenny's making because you're absolutely right. He wants the crowd involved. He not, he not only wants a six-man, he wants the seventh man back. He wants the crowd to be a factor in this game. They haven't really reacted positively to it yet. 4.45 to go here in the first period as uh, McKenzie now is out and Manning is back in. Now it's ready to go around. Well, Kenny figured he had the free kick out of the corner, and he'd try and take advantage of it. It didn't work. He got a full six seconds as the sixth man. All right, Sobieski up the floor, slides it to McLeod. Drago applying the pressure. Sobieski has to chip it cross field to Milano. Stankovic moves the pressure of the ball, gets it to midfield. And now the ball slides up to the blast red line, and Savage takes it there. Gives it to Chinapu, and there's a pushing foul. So that's uh, four fouls on Dallas and four on Baltimore, and now we've got another foul. And I think they're going to call it on Tattoo. I don't know if they're calling a foul or an early, an early play. 
and take a look at it again. It was after the they brought it in. Watch Chinapu bring it in. He tries to run the lane. He fakes bringing the ball in and runs right over Tattoo. Hardly a foul. Tattoo is just owning his own territory. Chinapu took it away. All right, Baltimore now with the ball. 4.13 to go. This is Drago, who's been a very quiet performer. Had a good regular season, but it's been no factor. And there's the sixth foul. I think it'll only be five, Chris. They didn't give him a foul oh, last sorry. time. It, was sort of, it wasn't... It wasn't put in play by Chinapu. He just ran over the ball and ran over Tattoo, so he restarted the ball. I stand corrected. That is number five. You'll see Drago, though. He does go down. We know that much. So 4.07 to go. A lot of time. Drago off the restart. Just bangs it down deep and off the board. Stankovic back to Drago. It is familiar yellow headband on, which says, say no to drugs. Great advertisement. Here's Savage. Corner. Chipped away by McCott. Savage with the ball. Shoots. In front. Still alive. Cleared by the defense. Chinapu with a shot. Cleared by the defense. And a good header there by, I think, Victor Moreland. A good job. Boy, you got to be a brave man to take a header off the foot of Chinapu. And the crowd now starts coming alive and getting into the game. Stankovic down into the corner. Bangs it to Child. Child overruns the ball and Sobieski comes up with it. 327 left. Milano tussles with Stankovic, wins the battle, still has the ball, looking for somebody to pass to and finds Lawson as he breaks to the red line. Shot! Blocked by Manning. A sizzler by Lawson. And Manning had to stretch fully across the crease to get his hands on the ball. Manning was fully extended to get that nicely placed shot, left pipe. Great save. Furphy, a much weaker shooter with his right foot. Everyone in the league knows Furphy is most dangerous with the left foot. And if you can make him go to his right, you're doing yourself a favor. 2.50 to go. Manning will play it on his own end to Savage. Up the floor to Chapman, who just drops it with a one-touch to Whitman. Now back to Savage. There's Furphy, another one of those blast forwards, who's got to be productive, or maybe this team will have no shot. Dallas with the ball, a two-on-one. Manning comes up, shot and a goal! Dallas applying great pressure, and Chris, it looks like the Blast has tired legs. It's very uncharacteristic of this team, but they're being outrun in every loose ball situation, and they are finding themselves in big, deep trouble. 2-0, 2 minutes, 29 seconds left in the quarter. Let's take a look at it. Just well, simply outrun. Well, it began this as Furphy simply failed to handle the ball at midfield, and Yaremovic took the ball away and outran Furphy, created a two-on-one, and then, look at this. I mean, he runs more than half the length of the field because he took the ball off Furphy's foot. And it's because of this sloppy ball handling by Baltimore uh, that they found themselves in this hole. Mike Yurimovich with his first goal of the playoffs in a 2 to nothing sidekicks lead with 2.29 left. Baltimore looks like a disorganized ball club. Whitman goes down, that'll be six. And now maybe a power play can light a fire where none other has existed. Let's watch this power play too, Chris, because they're going to change it. They haven't had that much success on it. They're going to go back to what made them a successful power play team earlier in the season. And that is they're going to put Stankovic in closer on the target area and try to get it to the wings where Chinapu can take a harder shot with McKenzie working the point. Well, here's the sixth foul. You can see Whitman goes for the ball, and he winds up uh, eating some... Uh, Turf supper. Another gutsy move by Kenny Cooper. He's putting McKenzie in. He doesn't want one man advantage. He wants two. He knows he needs a goal now. That's still another big risk, too. You're talking about only being in the first period now. If Dallas is able to chip that ball back over to McKenzie, they could come up with a cheap goal and a huge 3 0 lead. Of course, on the other hand, Baltimore now with a two man advantage by having McKenzie on the floor. So, are we seeing some signs of desperation here by the Baltimore coach, Kenny Cooper, in such an early part of the ball game? Well, they're playing that way. They're playing like they're a team without leadership right now, which they have plenty of. Somebody has to step forward and take it. Well, here we go. McKenzie will trigger it at the red line over to Furphy. Furphy shot. Knocked away by the defense. Back out to Furphy, and he just heads it out to McKenzie. Dallas playing in a 2-2 defense here. Baltimore horrible on the power play so far in this playoff series. Now Furphy again, shot blocked by the defense. McKenzie has to retreat. McKenzie coming back. Stankovic trying to cut the ball off. Furphy comes up with it. Now Baltimore regroups. Chinapu with the ball. Midfield takes it to the red line. He's got Drago to his right. Furphy to his left. Stankovic with the ball. Back to Furphy. Stankovic. Takes the shot. Goes to his left shot. Blocked again. Three straight blocks by the Dallas defense. 
Just packing in that defense, not giving him good shots. Watch Child and Drago down low. They're going to try to chip in a nice little garbage, sophisticated garbage shot in low. Well, again, the block by the defense. Baltimore couldn't find the open man in the zone. And now with 56 seconds left in the penalty, McKenzie brings it across the red line. To Stankovic on a post to Chinapu. He'll need to clear it and does out to McKenzie. We've got Child and Drago down low. McKenzie shoots. Save. Still in front of the box. Shot off the glass by Stankovic. Murphy with a shot. Blocked by the defense. And out it comes all the way down to the blast end of the floor. Tremendous defense by Dallas. But that was the good... First good flurry of offense that the Blast has shown. Maybe that'll get him going. Last chance for the Blast. 23 seconds to go on the penalty. 47 seconds left in the period. Shinapu shoots. Blocked by Sobieski. Drago now. Double team. Slides it to McKenzie. 13 seconds left in the penalty. Burfield on load. Shot. Blocked high up and above the air and over the glass. What a marvelous job by the sidekick defense. They've had some great shots. Shinapu with that rug burner. Perfect with that left foot. They got the right foot, the left foot. Sobieski's right there for each one. Well, that last exchange was the most frantic. Not only a good job by the Dallas defense in clearing the ball, but uh, Sobieski also forced to make one good save. Well, we're going to see this blast team get tested as far as character is concerned because everything is going just the way Cooper doesn't want it to go. So he's going to have three quarters to regroup, pull something out of his hat, and get this win if it's going to happen. Baltimore has played extremely tentative soccer in the first 14-27 of the game. Chapman will trigger it in, looking for a man. Got Burphy over around the ball. And here comes Dallas. Good hustle by Chapman, came back, got the ball back, but it was a miscommunication play where he hit it a little bit to the outside, Perfie went inside. Tattoo anticipating the long pass by Manning, stepped in front of Drago for the ball. Perfie now, fighting Tattoo, 10 seconds left. Look out, shot over the glass. Tattoo likes to get in that situation where two men play him. Actually, the players will tell you, the good players, that they like to be double teamed. It actually opens up seams between the two players more than a one-on-one -on -one situation. So he had it all his way there. The shot obviously high the glass. Well, let's look what we have here so far. A 2-0 Dallas lead built upon an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the blast bench. And a goal because of a mistake by Furphy in which he surrendered a ball at midfield and gave Dallas a breakaway. Two goals off of two mistakes, 2-0. Two Dallas, one second to go in the period, that'll be it. So time has expired in period number one here at the Baltimore Civic Arena tonight with the Dallas sidekicks leading by a score of 2 to nothing on goals by Carpoon and uh, Uremovich. We'll be back with more at the Baltimore Arena after this. We're back, at, we're back at the Baltimore Arena as Kenny Cooper talks to his assistant coach Jim Pollahan and during the break Cooper reamed his team out. And it's a good thing you wouldn't have, didn't have a mic on Cooper because I don't think he could have used much of what he said. Shots on goal 10 to 9 in favor of Dallas. A little misleading though because six of those nine shots by the blast came in the last three minutes during that power play and this was that great flurry leap. Get your eyes on Sobieski. One, two saves. Now watch him get back in position. Back to his feet. Went high off the glass, but he was being tested here. About six shots worth. That one with his defense packed in front of him. Again, Sobieski down for the save, back up to his feet. The blast, that was about three of their series of six or seven shots that were excellent shots. But Dallas, that's all they have to do is play defense now. They are in an excellent situation. Two goals, tattoo, not really lighting it up yet. And of course, he's capable of doing that. But now they can play a little bit more conservative. I'd say right from the get-go, Chris, they've played like the team that had the calm, the leadership, and the experience. Exactly like you thought the Blast would play. Yeah. But yeah. the Blast comes out tentative, shaken. Only thing I can think for the Blast is that maybe McWilliams will come in and, and pull a little bit of heart out of the team. They're not playing again with any intensity. McWilliams is known for his intensity. He's known for his heart. He's got excellent stats in the playoff. As we look at Sobieski, and maybe he will be the guy to light the fire. We'll see. The youngest, oldest goalkeeper in the league, 36-year-old Chris Sobieski. He's done a great job. Chinapu with a long shot to begin the second period. Baltimore down 2-0. And Kenny Cooper knowing that the next goal could well tell the tale in this game. And if it's a Dallas next goal, he's got big problems. Stankovic shot blocked by the defense. Moreland. 
doing a great job so far. McLeod, all of the Dallas defenders giving a lot of help to their keeper, Sobieski. Moreland's an absolute tremendous defensive player. He had 112 blocks on the season, and that's the same amount of blocks that Chris, I mean, that Bruce Savage has. We all know how good Bruce Savage is. This guy, Moreland, tied Savage for blocks in the MISL. Well, there's more to being a great defender than just blocking shots. A lot of times you just can't avoid but having your body in the way of the ball, but uh, Moreland has done a great job. Here's Drago. Kick into the corner to Chapman. He heads the ball to Stankovic. It's been a quiet Baltimore offense so far. Tattoo with the ball, chips it right by Chinapu. We could have a problem. Savage gets his leg on the ball and turns it away. Follow up Milano off the post. I'm not so sure they hit the post. It could have hit the left hand of Manning. Good save possible. Stankovic chips it to Chapman through the crease, knocked away by Lawson. And there's that Dallas defense working hard in the box again, saving Sobieski from having to come up with a great save. Drago now to Freddie Thompson, just onto the floor. Here's Furphy on. And he'll take the ball in the corner on the long pass from Whitman. Chips it in to Chapman, and we're going to get a foul on Lawson as Furphy is dropped. Fresh legs with Freddie Thompson coming in. We'll see if that makes any change in the energy level of the blast. Watch this play as we come in and get a foul. Lawson against Furphy. Lawson wraps around with the leg, pulls Furphy down. Of course, Furphy helping the momentum of the pull. First foul period for the Dallas sidekicks. Well, Baltimore got the start in the corner. And Dallas winds up with the three line violation, so Baltimore will restart. Chris, it goes without saying that the first goal of this quarter is big. of huge importance. Very big. Whitman and Savage. Whitman runs off the ball. The pass down low, picked off easily by Dallas. We almost had a breakaway by Tattoo. Chapman in front. Sobieski has to come out, and Chapman hits him in the box. A little Hollywood maybe by Sobieski. I don't think he got hit that badly. That could be wrong. We talk about the grind of a 52-game season. Sobieski has played every one of these playoff games, unlike Manning, who had uh, the break by having two goaltenders like Van Aaron coming in, who's an excellent goalkeeper. Sobieski every game, every minute. Lawson with a shot. Partially cleared by Furphy. Now, Savage knocks it up the boards, but Milano comes up with it. Well, Savage made a great play moments ago in taking the ball away from Tattoo and what would have been a Dallas breakaway with Tattoo leading the way. Header by Whitman. McWilliams in the game for the first time. Maybe McWilliams, the veteran who's been hurt most of the season, can provide the spark Baltimore so desperately needs. McWilliams dropped. Follow up McKenzie. He'll shoot. It's blocked. And Manning comes all the way up to his own red line to get the ball. Give him help quick. Whitman now. Again, Baltimore desperate for a goal. Whitman fires up the boards in front. Saves Sobieski as he covers up. And we've got a whistle. That was a good play. Whitman used the boards, came in to Furphy, who was waiting for that rebound. But Dallas is anticipating the entire game. They've been anticipating nicely. Let's take a look at it. Whitman rockets it off the boards. It actually was deflected from Moreland. Furphy's in great position. The Guams is coming in behind him. But that ball was turned away by Uramovich. There's Vanderbeck with the ball now. Centers it to Milano. And now we're going to get a tripping foul on Thompson. The player didn't go down, but the official felt that he had tripped him sufficiently to warrant the foul. And that's the fourth on Baltimore, so they're digging another little hole for themselves here. Unbelievable. Four fouls in only three minutes of the second period. That's a guaranteed situation where there'll be a man down this period. Hard to believe. Milano. He's in a fight with the ball down in the corner. Whitman and Thompson. Whitman keeps after it, clears it back to Manning. Manning, long pass down the middle of the floor, alertly picked off by Uremovich. Dallas doing a very good job of anticipating those breakaway passes by Manning. That's about the fourth they've intercepted so far in the game. Uremovich now against Stankovic, shoots in front, nobody home. And McWilliams will try and head it to Drago, and it goes up into the seats. McLeod knocked it away from Drago. They had an opportunity there to go two on two. Sure, it'd be nice to see Drago come down and get some offense going. He's really been tested in this series with Lawson. He's been playing, been played uh, defensively by Lawson, but Lawson also has been dragging him down the other end of the field and making Drago play defense, which has drained a lot of that offensive effort. Drago, 60-some points on the year, the most for any Blast player, but really non-existent in these playoffs. 
He has not been a factor. Stankable. Will he shoot? He will. Blocked by the defense of Sobieski. Williams chases, can't get it. Shinifu will clear all the way back into his zone to Manning. Chris, it's a good sign. Those are some nice shots in there by Stankovic, and some of those will find the mark if they can keep the pressure on. Yes. Sobieski got great help from David Stride that time, who got his foot on the ball. Now Drago, double team, shoots off the boards. And I thought they were going to call a handball on Chapman. Comes out to Dallas nonetheless as Vanderbeck brings it across the red line. Slides it left. Here comes the shot up the boards in front. Manning on the ball, still free. And now we've got a whistle against Baltimore. And that'll be number five on the blast. And Doc Lawson is down in the corner. And we're going to have an injury timeout here. As you'll see on the replay, Uremovich slides it off to the left. Powers has the ball. His shot off the boards. Lawson chases it. Looked like Manning had it. Then it squirted free, and then McKenzie wound up falling on top of Lawson, and they called the foul. McKenzie definitely ran him down, and uh, Lawson's still on the arena floor, the surface. The shot comes in, a lot of pressure on Manning. So far, Manning has six saves, and Sobieski's four. But look at the pressure Dallas has been putting on consistently this whole game. Right now, you'll see the blast coming in, double teaming when the ball gets into a any man situation. They've got to step up the pressure, and they've got to get some good shots. The last three minutes, they've had some excellent shots on the other end of the field. Stankovic primarily getting some good, hard shots, high percentage shots. I think if they can keep continue that kind of play, they're going to find the mark. Well, the key is to not get frustrated. You run your offense, you take your best shots, and if it's your night, they'll go in. If it isn't, there's not a thing you can do about it. The key stat right now, you just saw five fouls to one against Baltimore. They've already faced two Dallas power plays, fended off one, surrendered on another. Two to nothing Dallas lead at 10-51, remaining in the second period. Dangerous play right here. In front, kicked away by Savage. Dallas stole the ball. Comes out to the red line. Stride thinks about winding up. Instead drops it in the corner. Shot in front. Saved by Manning. And Stankovic clears to Chinapu. Gives it right back to Mike. Chinapu now. The crowd calling for action. Chinapu. Will he let it go? He stops. Swings to the middle. Gives it to Stankovic. The big guy. Kicks. Blocked by the defense again. Header by Savage. Cleared back to Stankovic. And the blast will regroup. Down into the corner. Chapman. I don't know what he was doing there. He just left the ball alone. And Dallas said, if you want to do it, we'll take it. And Sobieski clears it. Kevin Smith. Very strange play by Chapman. I don't know what he was doing. Chris, they're absolutely taking away the lanes for Stankovic when he sets up the shoot. Chinapu as well. Shot off the glass. Actually, a, actually a more of a centering pass. Drago has it. Down the middle of the field. One against four. And obstruction called against Dallas. That'll be only the second on the side kick. Absolutely no help. Drago came down. Four defenders back for Dallas. Look at Drago. He's got no help. He's got four green jerseys in front of him. He can't go anywhere. Well, no not, help by the blast off. Well, not only that, but Chinapu was going off the field. So if anything, you want to hold the ball out until you get some help. Ill-advised play. Stankovic wheels to the middle. Shoots. And it's knocked away by the defense and out of play. It'll be a blast restart. And that defense was the best offense they've got. Tattoo sliding across, knocking the shot of Stankovic's away. What they've done so far is take away the shot alleys. They're caving in on the defense and taking away those alleys for shooting, which means the blast has to find one more pass. But they're sliding into those passing lanes for the shot. Somebody has to be open. The guy who's shooting has to take the fake, dish it off for one more touch, and get the good shot. America's greatest statistician, Marty Aronoff, tells us eight block shots by the sidekicks. As Baltimore now pushes it in the box, Drago goes for it, and the ball's too high. Sobieski, who of course can use his hands, goes up and gets it. Nine and a half to go, first half, 2 nothing. Dallas lead, three line violation against Dallas. Five fouls against the Blast, don't forget. One more, and they're in a penalty situation. Drago now on the right wing. Double teamed, in trouble, taken right away. Vanderbeck comes up with the ball. Looking down low, trying to make the pass, and can't have Wisely shoves it off left. Shot, save Manning. And Whitman clears. Hard shot by Powers. And Manning alertly knocked it away. Dallas now with the ball. Again, keep in mind, five fouls on Baltimore. Chris, we talk about the importance of the next goal. Big difference between a two-goal lead and a one-goal lead. The blast has 
to score next to feel comfortable at all. Oh. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Wait a minute. Whoops. Well, I don't think anybody even in, if that call had been made in Dallas, they wouldn't have cared. Here's McWilliams. Drops it to Whippen. Off the boards. It's front shot. That wouldn't go. Thompson got a piece of the ball. He didn't hit it squarely, but hit a kind of a knuckle ball, and it just went to the right of Sobieski. Well, it was the left foot, and Thompson had to play it on a half volley. Very difficult. Couldn't really get a lot of backward foot motion on it, so he didn't have much speed. He kind of missed it. A great opportunity, though, for the blast. Let's keep the pressure on. Williams to Thompson. Shot off the boards. No good. McWilliams. Or Thompson hustles after the ball and clears it back to his teammate, Chinapu. He tries to kick it down into the corner to McWilliams, and alertly McLeod picks it off. I think Richard might have forced that pass. Nonetheless, Thompson comes up with it, and Dallas takes it right back. Murphy looking tired, goes off. Drago comes on. 7.50 left. There's Milano. I don't know where he was passing the ball. There wasn't a green shirt there unless you count all the guys on the Dallas bench. But I think we may get a timeout. The clock is stopped with 7.43 to go. And Dallas leading 2 to nothing. Well, Baltimore certainly had more chances, I think, in this period, uh, Leaf. But I, I still think we're seeing this pattern of, of sloppy play. I, I just can't count the number of bad passes that Baltimore has made. And also, we talked about uh, at the beginning of the game, the importance of those top three guys scoring. They haven't done it yet. Let's take a look at what happens after this game. If Baltimore wins, Eastern Division Finals, Game 3, the Baltimore Arena, June 27th, 7.30 p.m. Game 4, the Baltimore Arena, June 29th. Now, if you want tickets, call these numbers. In Baltimore, 792-4001. Washington, 432-0200. Of course, that would be May. I mean, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Oh, that's if they're still playing on June 27th, then uh, this league had better reassess itself. Actually, that is May. <laughs> we were just June. testing you to see if you're awake. It's Chris, said, very good. It said June, but... Oh, we were just testing right most of you fans to make sure that you're awake in this first half of action. It would be May 27th and 29th. Call those numbers for tickets. And if you live in Dallas, don't even write them down. I thought that was Jody Foster for a moment. Hey, oh, Dallas fans, right now you're getting all giddy. You're trying to line up your playoff situations. Same days, but here's the number you want to call. 361 kick for your ticket information for the games at Reunion Arena. And right now, I might write that number down. Well, I get no kicks from Champagne, and Kenny Cooper is getting no kicks out of what his team's been doing so far. 7.43 to go in the first half of tonight's decisive game five here between the sidekicks and the blast. And again, Dallas wins the ball at the red line. Smith to Tattoo, working on Savage. Tattoo in the corner, still with the ball, working on Savage. Looking in the box now, wheel shot, and oh, it didn't go in. I thought Dallas had a give-me goal. Finneman played better. Yaremovich flat out missed the shot. And Tattoo did a, a wonderful job of setting it up. He worked Savage into the corner, unloaded a bullet through the crease, and Yaremovich flat out missed the, uh, missed the shot. Yaremovich was parked in the far post, and that was an easy play to defend, but the blast again, sleeping on the play. Michael Brady on for his first shift tonight. He gives up the ball. Stride races into the Baltimore end, puts on the brakes and waits for some help. Clears it out to midfield to Moreland. 6.50 left. Chris, I guess if there's any saving grace in this first half, if the Blast can somehow get a goal, they're only down by one, and they've played a horrendous first half. Correct. Milano outside McLeod. Shot way up into the crowd. It'll be Baltimore's ball. I don't think it's for lack of effort in certain ways. These guys are out there giving it all they have. They just are totally out of sync. They are not playing with the character that the Blast has been successful with over the years. They're not taking charge. Let's take uh, Tattoo's shot across the face of the goal, and look at that. Brady right there should have made that defense and play very easily, but Yaramovich was right there to knock it in, and somehow maybe Manny even got a piece of it to knock it back out. He, he must have, but nonetheless, that's a ball that's an easy volley. You, you, I mean, if you give a player in the MISL that shot, he'd make it 99 times out of 100. That time it was a Yaramovich miss, or Dallas would be sitting very lovely at 3 to nothing. It's 2 to nothing as Baltimore restarts now. Manning in his own goal, picks up the ball, and will just drop it out to Chinapu outside the red line. Dallas with that high-pressure defense, making the blast work very hard in every pass, and it's been a very effective ploy. Manning now has to do what he doesn't want to do, use his feet to get the ball out. 
All the way back into the blast zone of McKenzie. He chips it up. Stankovic now with the ball. Working to his right, and he's run off it. Reed chases it to the uh, to the boards and gives it to Chinapu. Look at that, taken away. And Chinapu goes down. That could have been a foul. Nothing called. Chinapu comes up with the ball. Baltimore got lucky. Chinapu drops it off to Chapman. Stankovic wants it. He gets it, but a second later than he wanted it. He was screaming for the ball. I don't think Chapman saw him. Now McKenzie outside the red line of Chapman. All the way across the field to Chinapu. Chinapu, left foot shot, kick save Sobieski. And nobody there for the rebound for Baltimore. Powers now with the ball, lays it ahead to Milano. Dallas much more patient when they have the ball than is Baltimore and passing much better. Tattoo now, always dangerous. Shot off the boards, comes out way out to Chapman. Last trying a line shift here, so there was nobody for Chapman to pass it to, and now we're going to get a foul on Dallas in the fourth on the sidekick. Chris, you know, the killer play in the indoor box league is that second shot, and the Blast hasn't had a good opportunity for a second shot. Dallas is packing it in and knocking away the first block so that they don't get the second shot opportunity. And that's what they have to clear up. Chapman lays it off the Furphy, and he couldn't get there to take the shot. A foot too short on a steamrolling Furphy who was breaking through the box and the ball was behind him. Pat two now being marked by Savage. Has to chip it away. Less than five minutes in the first half. Baltimore has played a long time with five fouls. In fact, they've played seven minutes sitting on five fouls. As a matter of fact, they picked up the first five fouls in the first four minutes of this period. None since. Oh, there's another foul. This one is on who? Maybe it's not a foul. Well, I think what happened is the ball went up into the photographer's box there. Yeah, that's what it is. Out of bounds call. Very tough to figure out, Chris. The only thing I can say at this point was that maybe the whole team should have gone to Florida. <laughs> I mean, really, they look like they're just had too much soccer. Shot outside. Oh, just wide of the post. McLeod unloaded a cannon, and Manning, a split second late getting there, and the ball was just right of the post. Shot goes screeching through the uh, crease. And out to the far side. In front, Savage rushes up to get it. Sends it up the boards, picked off by Dallas. Side kicks with the ball. Smith. Dallas winning 80% of everything out here so far. Shot McLeod, blocked by Savage. Savage drops back off the tattoo. He's posted up high. Bruce kicks it away. Denies Savage the uh, tattoo the ball. Yuremovich now shot. Save Manning. And the rebound comes out, comes out to Brady, who tips it back to Scott. 340 to go. And again, you can see Dallas just pressuring every ball. And Baltimore's normally sharp passing has not been evidenced tonight. Whitman in the zone to McWilliams. Drops it off to Furphy. Murphy challenged by Tattoo. Now lays it off to Chinapu. Whitman and Savage laying back at midfield. The blast defense. Chinapu off the boards in front. Nobody there. And Milano comes up with the ball. Whitman and Savage both staying back on defense. That let Dallas double team the ball. Little or no chance for offense without the full team down. Making it almost impossible to score from there. Tattoo tries to trigger one, and it's blocked out of bounds. It'll be Dallas ball. I think Kenny Cooper has to thank his lucky stars that one good thing is happening, and that Scott Manning is up to his normal spectacular game. Otherwise, it could easily be 5-0. Oh, the last few minutes, though, Yuremovich has missed a wide-open shot. And then uh, a moment ago, another shot whistled just wide of the post. There's Manning there with a the save. The ball pops free, but no green shirts in there for the follow-up. And now we'll get the restart. How Tattoo. long can he hold on? Scott uh, Manning playing the goal. Tattoo on Savage. Last time he was in there, he set up a great opportunity for a Dallas score, and Yuremovich missed the shot. This time it's blocked, comes out in front. And Chinapu was able to screen his man so that Manning could come up with the ball. That time, Freddie Thompson also double-teamed him, Chris. Last time he wasn't double-teamed at all. Chinapu now, the crowd screaming for something. Shot off the boards in front. Chapman can't get his leg on it. Comes out to Stankovic. Back to Chinapu. He'll keep throwing it in there and hoping something happens. Now Stankovic. The Dallas defense slides over to meet the ball. Mike, very good one-on-one -on -one player. 
And there's a foul. That'll be number five. So we're all even in that department now. And the next foul, shot, saved. Sobieski blocked away. The next foul will send somebody into the penalty box. Could be a blessing for the blast to get that power play situation and go out with a 2-1. There it is. Number six on Powers, and Baltimore will have the power play advantage. That's got to be an MISL record. The Blast getting five fouls in the first four minutes of this period. They held out since then, no fouls dead on, and they let Dallas catch up to them. Here it is, the one that puts the power play into Kenny Cooper's hands. Stankovic seeing the opportunity, sort of gets a little bit of vacuum class there, but it was well worth it. Cooper now has two minutes left on the clock in the half, and he can use all of it in his power play. You know, the last time this happened here in the arena, uh, I recall this was in game two of the playoffs. Uh, Baltimore, in a situation like this, got the power play opportunity, and 10 seconds into it, they committed their sixth foul, and they wound up playing the last two minutes of the period, basically four on four. The way things so, are happening right now, I would guess that would be a good opportunity, or a good chance that that would happen rather than a goal. Things not going to blast way. They have pulled Manning, have they? Manning's out of the goal. It'll be seven against five with a blast. Cooper again pulling out all the stops, knowing that he desperately needs a goal to get his team on track in the second half coming up. Well, a reminder now, the Blast uh, in the playoffs have converted only two of 12 power play opportunities. They've had one here tonight, had one good chance against Sobieski, and that was all. Dallas has had two power play opportunities and converted on one. There's the shot of McKenzie, who comes into play goal as Manning goes out, and as Lee said, that gives Baltimore really two extra attackers. But, of course, there's a danger in this. And, again, this is the play that they used earlier in the year. They had not been using it in the playoffs here to four. This is the old play that's not working that well tonight, is it? Horrendous pass by Drago out of the corner. And uh, McLeod stepped in and booted the ball. Cooper's the... pulling Drago off the field. I don't Boy, blame him. It was a horrendous pass by Drago. I don't know what the world he was thinking of. Mackenzie Jinapu. He's going to have to play it back out and does to McKenzie. Nick Williams takes Drago's spot. He's down low in the post. Murphy chips it uh, to Stankovic. Now, when it comes to the high post, somebody's got to break forward. Nobody did that time, so they have to reset. 121 left in the penalty, 126 left in the game. First, they're getting all out of position. They got the right foot on the left foot side. They got the left foot on the right foot side. The blast looks disorganized. Handball on Dallas there, right at the corner of the box. Now they're balancing up. Chinapu's going back to his spot. Furphy will be over on the left. And Chinapu wants a timeout. This team just looks flat out disorganized. And Cooper realizing what you were pointing out, Lee, said, wait a minute, let's call a timeout and get this thing set up right. But you can go back to that pass to Drago. He was given the ball in the corner, a corner and just gave a lazy kick with the ball in the middle of the Dallas zone. It's absolutely scary. This team is playing so unlike anything they've ever played before. The first four games, you have to give a lot of credit to Dallas. The Blast had their moments, but they haven't had any moments in this half. They really haven't done anything right. Kenny's over there. He made a little bit. He's making a drawing before the team came over, Chris. So I suspect he's going for one exact play, saying, "Okay, guys, follow the dotted lines. Here we go." All right. We're going to see again what we were talking about. This exemplifies all of Baltimore's problems so far tonight. Now here we are setting up the power play. Chinapu will take it into the corner. Now Drago's got to work it to an open man. Look at this. Boing. And McLeod, I mean, that's just a lazy pass. And I guess Vanderbeck just steps up and boom, if he hits that ball square, it's in the net at the other end of the floor. Well, that's more than Cooper could stand. And it was out. He pulled Drago immediately. He almost came off onto the, <laughs> onto the surface and dragged him out. Uncharacteristic, Drago's had a tremendous year. He has more points than any Blast player, but he has been non-existent, basically, for the playoffs. I think he's a nervous player, Leaf. Some players do that. Now, he hasn't been in a position like this. You know, he's not played on great teams yeah. before. And, and some players just simply get nervous. And I, I don't mean that as a polite way of saying choking. I just think he's trying too hard. Although in that situation, I don't think he tried very hard at all. Now, in Kenny Solis' position, he, draw, he drew a play over there. So there's definitely a play that Kenny thinks he can take advantage of from this situation. Here we go. That's not what they wanted. That was the last option in, in, in what they had drawn up. To have to have the ball come out to Chinapu and take a... 25-foot shot. That's not what they wanted. They still have plenty of time. There's a whole minute left. The idea is to get a good shot, not a bad shot. So if they take their time, that's better. 
Blocked away by the defense. Kevin Smith with a good job. Chinapu keeps throwing rockets in there. Child tries to center. Nobody home. Stankovic has to clear outside. Chinapu now slides it across. Now McKenzie. 40 seconds to go in the penalty. 47 left in the half. A goal would be huge here for Baltimore. Stankovic in the corner. Juremovic on him. He wheels. Tries to get to it. Juremovic right there. Stankovic though maintains position. In the middle, right in the box. Nobody on shot. Goal! Williams finally gets Baltimore out no, of I, I really think it was McKenzie. Watch McKenzie come crashing across. The goalie keeper is shirt. Watch it. I think it was McKenzie. McKenzie up top. McKenzie came in from a high post. I was just about to say, Chris, that nobody's cutting. Nobody was cutting. We're standing flat-footed. Look at Child flat-footed. Except McKenzie. He's moving. Look at McKenzie move in. The ball will come out. McKenzie comes in, takes a shot, and he scores. There you go. I thought it was McWilliams, and the call was right by Lee Felsmo. In either event, Baltimore has come up with maybe its biggest goal of the season. Such a difference. Two to one. You can pull that man out of the goal and get a goal at any moment. If you're two goals behind, you can really pack the defense in, and it's such a dramatic difference that Kenny Cooper is much relieved. He has had a team that has basically stunk up the first quarter and the second quarter, and they're coming out of this first half, hopefully, with only a one-goal deficit. There's a man who's played more games than anyone else in the league, Dave McKenzie. And he breaks what had been a horrendous run of play by the blast here in the half. And I'll tell you, a goal in that situation makes amends for a lot of ills, doesn't it? There's absolutely no motion in there where Stankovic had to go. Stankovic had no play except to use the boards. It was obvious, but everybody was flat-footed. Luckily, McKenzie read it, came well inside of where he would be normally positioned because he had the goalie shirt on, and he got the goal. Tremendous play. <laughs> well, Tattoo is hot right now. As they started at midfield, Tattoo was clearly breaking away and in on Scott Manning. But they blew the whistle, and they felt that the start hadn't been clean. And Tattoo is seething. If things work out well for the Blast, Chris, we'll go back to that second quarter and think about when five fouls accumulated in four minutes, and the Blast held off that sixth foul, got themselves in a position where they had the power play with two minutes to go. It couldn't have been any better. It could be storybook if they could continue to score. Actually, I think it was 12.05 on the clock when they picked up the fourth foul because I remember you saying in two minutes and 55 seconds, they picked up five fouls. So they did an even greater job. They've gone practically now 12 minutes and five seconds without committing a foul. Chinapu. Battles on the boards, comes out to Savage, Milano beats him to the ball, and it goes to Manning. I'd hold on to it, you don't want to foul. They'd Three. love to have a two to one halftime score, and I'll tell you what, the paint's gonna be peeling off the wall at halftime. Well, despite the goal by McKenzie to get Baltimore within a, a goal of the lead, now we're having a discussion. Look at Cooper, he is having to be restrained by Scott Manning, who's so upset. <laughs> and I think that might go back to that first two-minute penalty, which was called on the Baltimore bench in the opening moments of the game. Chris, Look I talked Cooper. to Kenny yesterday, and we talked about this referee situation. In game two here in the Civic Arena, they had calls that looked as if they were going definitely against the Baltimore Blast. He said, I'm not going to let it happen. He said, if they get calls against them, as we see Tracy Roberts actually already trying to get Kenny over to our microphone well, position. We're going to find out what the problem is. Kenny said, I'm not going to let it happen, Leaf. He said, if that calls start going against my team I'm getting in the face of these referees and let them know I'm not going to take it he feels it's totally unjust and that's exactly what he did right there well the officials are getting an escort off the floor here I hope someone doesn't do something stupid here like throw anything at them as we get Kenny Cooper wired up and the first thing we'll want to ask him of course is what was the beef at the end of the game which uh, literally had his goalkeeper Scott Manning uh, having to restrain him because I don't think I've ever seen Kenny and Kenny can you hear us yes yes Kenny you were livid there at the end of the first half and had to be restrained what happened hey, Chris this, this officiation no, I just I just can't believe it let the players play the fans come to see the players this is what we've talked about all week long this is what the media's talked about this is what the fans have talked about this is two very very good teams 
It's a playoff game. Let the players play. The fans don't come to see the officiating. Kenny, you had two quick fouls called on you in the first quarter and then a unsportsmanlike conduct call. What was that all about? Well, uh, Paul went in, I think he went a little bit aggressively on Milano. Right? I think that was a good call by the referee. But you've got to let the players play, Chris. This is a playoff game. Everything's on the line here. Kenny, we haven't seen a game where so many mental mistakes have been made by the Blast team. They usually are picture perfect as far as mental mistakes. They're our barometer in this league. This is a very, very uncharacteristic first half for the Baltimore Blast, and we don't know why. Well, we, we've talked about this on the bench. I mean, you know, players have to adjust to pressure. This is a pressure situation. And I think the jury's out on some of the players, and they've got to come through. And I believe they'll come through in the second half. I believe we can win this game. Kay. We have made some mental errors, there's no doubt about it. We give the ball up, we've made bad passes, and I think what it is, we're a little bit anxious, we're pressing, we're playing full court press. But, you know, let's give, give Dallas some credit, too. Well, Kenny, I know on the power play just before McKenzie scored, you pulled Drago out immediately after you made a very sloppy pass. That's the kind of thing I know you don't tolerate as a Well, it's, it's not good enough. You know, it's, it's just not good enough from professional players. I mean, Drago is a great player, and he's got to do the business. He's got to do the job, and in this series so far, he's not got on track, and we can't wait for people to get on track. It's got to be done now. Kenny, thanks for stopping by. Get back to your team. They Thank need you very much. Thank you. Boy, I'll tell you, he's, that, that's as hot as I've ever Whoa. seen him. Argue the finest defender in the MISL and a man who has not been able to sleep very well throughout this series because he has been in charge with stopping the finest offensive player in the league and that of course would be tattoo of dallas do you uh, see this guy in your dreams <laughs> uh... thankfully i haven't seen him too much because the only thing i see during the game is his back of his jersey and his name so i don't think about him too much this is a player who posts up very well bruce in basketball terms a guy who likes to take you one-on-one -on -one down into the hole and work on you in fact we saw that work for the game winning goal in game four when it was basically a one-on-one -on -one move now do you study players such as tattoos so you can anticipate what they're going to do at a spot on the floor i think I don't really study him, it just, just comes from playing against him so many times. And a player like Tattoo, when he did beat me on the goal, it's just his strength. He's so short and so strong that when he turns, you can't really knock him off the ball as you can other players because when you go to hit him, you're like hitting him in his chest instead of other people's thighs, so it makes it difficult. It can uh, safely be said, I, I think, that uh, the, the one person in this arena tonight who will not want to see Tattoo taking off his shirt is you. <laughs> that's for sure. You know, that's going to be my job tonight to keep that on there, and hopefully I will and if not hopefully Richard and Michael score about 15 goals and we won't have to worry about it. Kenny Cooper did what I thought was an extraordinary thing after game four in Dallas while he and the rest of your teammates came back to Baltimore he gave you a plane ticket to Pensacola where your wife is and said get away for a few days. I really enjoyed that you know it's been a tough series for me you know having to play against him play so many minutes and Kenny realized it and said you know take a couple days off and you know, I'll try to pay him back for that tonight. Bruce, uh, this may be an inopportune moment to ask this, but I must. An anyhow, this is the last year of your contract here. There has been some talk that there could be a franchise coming up in South Florida, which is home to you. W would that be an inducement for you to leave this team? I don't know. You know, I, that's something, you know, we'll think about at the end of the year. Sure, I'd love to play in South Florida, but, you know, the Blast has been good to me, and, you know, I'll definitely talk to them first. Okay, one other thing. The Blast has not gotten a great deal of production out of its forwards. Seems to me to be a very important thing in this game tonight. I think so. You know, it's been a really tight series. You know, both teams have played pretty well defensively, and, you know, we're definitely looking for a big game out of, you know, our big guys tonight, and hopefully we can break this one open. Okay, there he is, all-league defender Bruce Savage, uh, who has the toughest job on the floor tonight, stopping tattoo. Thanks for visiting. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to have more of uh, halftime here at the Baltimore Civic Arena with uh, Leif Elsmo, who will be back with a very special guest. Well, if you've watched any games of the MISL, you certainly know who this gentleman is, the most prolific scorer this year in the MISL. Tattoo from Dallas, a tremendous year for you, 73 goals, 400 and some shots. This year had to be above and beyond anything you could have dreamed coming into it. You're right. You know, I uh, was never in my mind I could have a, a season the way I did, but I trade every goal, every assist, or every shot for a win tonight. Well, I'm sure your whole team's backing you in that respect. And talking about tonight's game, everybody's talking, Tattoo, about the matchup between you and Bruce Savage. We just talked to Bruce a moment ago. It is a tremendous rivalry and a clean rivalry. Now, we get that from the press. Let's hear from you. What goes on out in the field? Is it as clean as it looks? You've got two top-notch performers, two all-star players, and you guys are going head-to-head -head for five straight games. Well, that's one thing I respect on, on Bruce because he's, uh, he's a great defender and he's clean. Okay, and uh, I don't try to use any dirt tricks on him because he doesn't do it with me. 
So you know, uh, that's one thing I appreciate, and uh, and I and hopefully the fans will appreciate too, because uh, you know it's something really wonderful. You know, he get in the field and he concentrate for 60 minutes. Sometimes he even talk with me, and uh, you know, and that that's the great. You know, and uh, you know, I give credit to him, and uh, he's a grand, great defender and, and clean defender. Tattoo. Everybody talks about Bruce Savage playing tattoo, but Kenny Cooper brought up a point that tattoo has to play Bruce Savage when he's on the offense and Bruce has had a few goals this game what does that end of the field like to you uh, Bruce has had a little bit of success playing offense well you know uh, let's put it this way you know he's he scored two goals when we play here in the first game and uh, I was a real surprised uh, because uh, you know I didn't expect him to go on forward and things like that but uh, uh, to me as a forward I cannot think about Bruce he have to think about me of the moment I, I be a defender and he be a forward, I'm in trouble. That's not my best. So I have to just force him to, to, to worry about me, not tattoo worry about Bruce. Tattoo, the season has been talked about a lot by Kenny Cooper and a lot of the coaches around the league. They say it's been a little bit too long of a season. It's affected the gate somewhat. You get a tremendous amount of playing time each and every game. And I bet you if any player feels the wear and tear of a full season, it's got to be tattoo. What has this season done to you as a player? Do you feel it with the extra minutes you have to put in and the season getting a little bit longer? Well, I think that's that's one thing we have to to look. You know, I think the the, the league had to look and say, well, you know, I think uh, 52 games is too much, and we're going now. Uh, the win in this game, you have another seven games, and going middle of June, and now you think about the final. It's going to finish in July, and uh, and you have to start another season again. It, it's real long. And, and tough on the players, you know, because you play so many back-to-backs, and that's what hurt you. And uh, about me, you know, the, the difference this year was, uh, you know, I, I was having a good season, and, and every game, every goal was a, a little bit, was incentive to me, was a, uh, was a little more power given to me, because I was doing so good in the field, so, you know, I didn't feel uh, as much I, I, I should if I have bad season. You know, that's that's the the, the difference to me. But, the, you know, it's, it's so long and, and unfortunately I have to spend more time in the field than I want to because we don't have the, you know, the, the, the real forward change with me. You know, we have two players change with me and they are midfield. So, you know, I have to spend more time in the field and I, it's no good for me. Today is not going to be good for me for the long run because you know, more you spent, yeah, you know, and probably force, force me to retire as soon as I want, you know, I don't want that, so. All right, let's keep, him, uh, let's keep him running, so maybe he will retire a little bit early. <laughs> Tattoo a tremendous season, and we've got a real good rivalry going here with Dallas, and we wish you well against anybody but the Blast. Continued success to you. Well, uh, I take the compliments, but uh, let's keep it that part about the Blast, and then keep Wish me luck for the, the series. Absolutely. <laughs> Good luck. We'll be back with more of our halftime after this short break. Came over from Los Angeles earlier in the season. Doc Lawson back in the corner. Takes a hard shot off the boards. And it's knocked in pretty as you please by Mark Carpin. And that ball went in. Yeah, that Scott Manning had nothing to do to say about that. And that was the second goal of the game. Now here's the first goal for the Dallas sidekicks. Ball's driven down the boards by Yaramovic. This is the second goal. Oh, this he is the second goal. Furphy. Look at Furphy. Totally beaten. Scott Manning gambled. He had a choice to make. He could have stayed in the goal or he could have blown out of the goal and cut down the angle. And he did cut down the angle and he lost that battle. And the third goal are the, uh, the actual the play goal. by the Blast. Now watch Stankovic. Not much activity in the crease area for the Blast, but Stankovic only has one play off the boards. McKenzie reads it. Watch to the right of your screen. McKenzie comes in, knocks it past the defense. Bango, just like that, one opportunistic play, and the Blast is back into a game that they have no right to be in. You know, we were talking on a break, Leaf, and I, and I think it's interesting, Cooper's explosion at the end of the first half came after his team had played 12 minutes and 5 seconds of the second period without having a foul called on them, and any one foul in 12 minutes and 5 seconds would have sent Dallas into a power play, I and yet he was still angry about the officiating. I really hope he didn't ruin a good thing, because the refs seem to have gotten the idea they were letting the teams play. Let's take a look at the stats. Pretty even down the line. Nothing dramatic that's going to cause an advantage to one team or the other. And the Blast, again, the only thing I can say is you saw the game. The Blast is very lucky to be in this game only down 2-1. to one. Well, I go back to that uh, play by Tattoo in the corner when it was 2 to nothing, Dallas. 
and Tattoo worked um, Savage very nicely. Got off a great crossing pass to the far post, and Yuremovic flat out failed to put the ball in the net. That would have made it three to nothing. Chris, it'll be interesting to see what he does with Drago. Kenny Cooper will stay behind his players to the grave. And I talked to him about Drago yesterday. He said the guy is being made by Lawson to play defense and offense. He defended him to the hilt. Today, Drago was playing lackluster, confused. Cooper went out and dragged him off the field and sat him down. That is not good enough, he said, for the Baltimore Blast. That may have an effect on this team. We'll see what happens in the third period. Well, uh, Drago will start the second half on the Blast bench. Actually, I'm looking. There he is. Okay, I thought for a minute he didn't come out. So here we go in the third quarter. After the first half ended with a huge outburst by Cooper. It had to be restrained by his goalkeeper, Scott Manning. Or Cooper might be watching the second half in the cheap seats. And a much better crowd here, by the way, for game five than what the Blast experienced in games one and two when they averaged only about 6,700 fans. This is a larger crowd, I'd guess maybe 7,500. But again, well below a season average of more than 10,000. And part of that, I think, is just the length of the schedule. It's too long. There's Manning, long pass up the floor to Chapman, who's been quiet tonight. Savage boots it into the corner, nothing there. Looking for Chapman, and Tattoo comes up with the ball. Savage doing the job on Tattoo in the first half. Breakaway by Uremovich, can't settle the ball. Otherwise, he'd had a clean shot on Manning. Nonetheless, he comes up with it, shot blocked by Thompson. Trey Thompson sacrificed his body on that one. He laid it out and knocked the ball away. Good hustle. That's the kind of play expected by Kenny Cooper. Tattoo again on Savage. Shot partially blocked by Savage. Removich has it. Chips it out to the red line. Moreland shot wide of the mark. And, oh, a collision along the boards, and we're going to have a whistle as Thompson went zipping in there for the ball. And this is against Dallas. They're calling on McLeod, I believe. Chris, for our HSE fans, let's uh, take a second just to say hats off. Your Dallas team has played pretty damn well. We've been talking about the Blast and how maybe they aren't playing at the snuff, but Dallas has played an excellent first half. No question about it. This has been a very good season for the sidekicks. I know that uh, their organization certainly had to be a little disappointed with the turnouts for games three and four at the Reunion Arena. Again, their crowds were off from the regular season average. But this franchise has made great strides, and they have the most exciting player in the game in Tattoo, and that ain't bad to build on. Well, in the last two years, they've increased their attendance, their home average attendance, by 60%. 25% this year, and 60% total for the last two years. This is a program that's really growing, and, I can't, and this kind of success just breeds that kind of energy. All right, here's the pass down low to McWilliams. He can't handle it, and there's a foul on McWilliams. I still think the satellite boo of the night has to go to the two Dallas newspapers who failed to send writers out here to cover the fifth game of this series. That, to me, is absolutely unbelievable. They cover the team all year long, and then in a decisive fifth game, they don't send a reporter. That's absolutely unbelievable. So all you HSE fans, remember, don't tell the papers. Jeez. Those are two good papers. I mean, I just don't understand those kinds of decisions. Anyhow... That's out of our domain. This game is in our domain, and it's 3-12 to go third quarter and a 2-1 Dallas lead. Lawson off the boards in front, and Manning comes up with it. He looks for an outlet and finds Whitman, although that's not the kind of outlet Manning wants to make. He wants to come up throwing a ball like a quarterback, like John Elway. And nobody does it better than Scott Manning. He has an excellent outlet pass. McKenzie has the only goal for the blast. Slides to Whitman, shot, save, Sobieski, and no rebound as he clutches the ball to his breast. Wes McLeod has been doing an outstanding job of being the first goalie. Look out, breakaway. Can Manning get back? Moreland stole the ball. He's never been able to pull the trigger. Here's the shot. Way wide of the mark. Moreland with the ball chipped away by Whitman. Hard to believe the sidekicks couldn't get that off. Dallas continues to put excellent pressure on the blast. Shot wide again. This time Smith pulled the trigger. Here comes Chinapu ahead of Stankovic, who's got the ball at the red line. Shoots the way outside off the glass. And it goes out of bounds. You know, every game in this series has been decided by one goal, Chris. Two overtimes. This one looks like it's going to fall in the same category. What a rivalry. And the whole MISL is setting up that way. All the playoffs have been very, very tough. Very, very close games. Well, as we said at the top of the show, if this game does 
Uh, well, first of all, let's see this. Here's Moreland. Look at Manning. Has to Moreland come in. Moreland pulled it back, and he didn't have the proper step on the ball to get the touch after he made Manning commit. That's so he had to take it into the boards and bring it back. Lucky break for the blast, and he didn't have the ball that close to him. Huge break for the blast. There's no question, because once you get the goalkeeper to commit and you can get him down on his face, then you just simply walk around him and let it go. And Moreland just couldn't control the ball. All right, here's Savage, hounded down in the corner. This could be trouble, and there's a foul. As Tattoo went in against Manning, they shake hands, no hard feelings there. An aggressive play by Tattoo, but it's a foul, and that's number three on Dells. Here's Drago, his first shift of the half. He gets a nice pass from Savage and can't control it. And here's a man who's trying so hard. Look at him run. Nothing's working, but he's trying. Stankovic slides it down into the corner to Thompson, to Mike, and back outside to Bruce Savage. Crowd really coming alive now. They'll explode if Baltimore get on the board here and tie this one up. Thompson, Jeremovic follows him into the corner, comes outside, and Stankovic is going to have to push it all the way back to Manning. Chris, I don't know when we should introduce this thought, but we have one thing we can help the blast with, and that's your tie. If this score stays the same in the fourth quarter, we may have to tell our fans about the tie you're wearing and how it may help the Blast team. Well, uh, we'll get to that later. Here's a breakaway, man. It comes out. Tattoo goes for the ball. It's three in the corner. And Savage will clear all the way up the midfield. And there's Drago on a breakaway. Bends man off. Shot. And the follow-up. Chapman couldn't get to it. But a great play, nonetheless, by Drago. He came in and made a good shot. Chapman was where he should have been. The ball just wide. Tattoo now in the corner. Shot, slides through the goal mouth. And off to the far corner where Lawson picks it up, shoves off Murphy with a left hand, and then centers it outside. Pace thickening up, uh, quickening here. And now there's a collision of bodies along the boards and a foul against Chapman of Baltimore. If Drago shot... If Drago's shot hadn't been so hard, I really believe Chapman would have been able to convert. Chapman was reading the play beautifully as we look at the foul call. That'll even it up almost. Three to two. Foul calls. Three for the sidekicks, two for the blast. Ten minutes to go in the quarter. Manning handled Tattoo's soft shot very easily. Now it's Chinapu who has it stripped away by Victor Moreland. Chinapu pursues Lawson in the corner. Battle for the boards. Both teams using an el their elbows an awful lot. Landed a lot of pushing off here in the quarter. Now Stankovic. Chinapu circles behind him. Stankovic shot in the box. Blocked away by the defense. Looking for McWilliams, and McWilliams couldn't get an angle on the ball. Pace by both teams. Frantic now. 2-1 game. 9.42 to go. McKenzie. Stankovic. Across the red line. Tries to wind it up. Box shot. Saved by Sobieski. And Lawson tries to clear. It's loose in the box. Comes outside and Lawson will get it. What a shot by Stankovic. Left foot, Sobieski right where he had to be. Two all-star performances. And these two teams are letting it all hang out in the third quarter. And the crowd now into the game as it has not been all night long. Trying to exhort the blast into a score. Furphy into the box. McWilliams chips it out. It's free and now it comes loose as Brady couldn't get to it. Dallas comes out of the zone now. McLeod. Tries to hit a breaking Milano, chased every step of the way by McKenzie, and he clears it to Furphy and back to Madden. Chris, we're talking about the importance of the second, of the first goal for the Blast. This next goal, the Blast can get it, will ignite this crowd and really put him into gear. McKenzie wanted to carry it into the zone and could not. Now he's going to have to clear it again back to Manning. He'll play it with his feet. Up to Chinapu, and his pass goes to no one. Fortunately, Furphy comes back to get it. Dallas now applying the pressure. Baltimore, a little trouble to get it out of the zone. Midfield, red line now. Chinapu, he'll try. He shoots wide. No follow-up by McWilliams. Dallas with the ball, and it comes back out to McWilliams. Davy Mack, fighting back from serious knee surgery a year ago at this time. Some said he'd never play again. He's in there tonight. And here he goes. Shot off the boards and tipped back to Sobieski. That's been the situation all night long. Kevin Smith cut down the alley right there. The Dallas team is cutting down those passing alleys, and they're doing it beautifully. Eight minutes exactly to go in the third quarter. Dallas leads 2-1. Tattoo. It's been denied. Shoots. Save Manning from right in front. 
Patu got by McKenzie and unloaded a bullet, and Manning made the save. Talk about a pressure save. The season's hanging on every save, and Manning was up to it. Now Stankovic clears it back to midfield to Thompson. We're going to get a change as Chinapu comes off, and Brady comes on. And there's an excuse me, but I think I'll kick this one out and stop the clock play by McLeod. Fans boo, they wanted two minutes for a delay of game. But we're going to have a timeout. Let's take a look at Scott Manning's save. Tattoo comes down. Nice left foot. It was a little bit extended, so he really couldn't pick his spot. He just hit it hard. Scott Manning came out, cut down the angle a little bit, and that guy is playing a Scott Manning game. And he'll play much better than MISL. Take another look at the angle. Watch Manning. Here he is getting loose. On the toes. On the balls of his feet. Watch him move out a little bit. Moves out to the ball. Knocks it down. Scott Manning has kept his team in the game. Two to one. They're in a perfect position to salvage a game that they almost butchered in the first half. Again, hope we're not too critical of the Blast, Chris, but we're just as critical as uh, Kenny Cooper is. Everybody demands a lot from the Blast. They're an excellent team, a team that has been the barometer of excellence in the Eastern Division for many years. And tonight, just not putting it together against a team from Dallas who has it all going on eight cylinders. 14 saves by Manning, 10 for Sobieski to this point. We mentioned earlier Manning in a brilliant losing effort on Sunday came up with 29 saves. And of course he failed to stop the last shot and that was the game winner by Tattoo. Sobieski has not been tested as severely as has Manning because Sobieski's defense has done a marvelous job in the box. So it's uh, two to one. And to catch you up on the fouls as we reach the midway point of this period, three on the sidekicks and two on the blast, not a factor yet. The blast will restart play from deep within the Dallas zone over in the far corner. Savage, Furphy, Stankovic, Thompson, and Chapman. Stankovic in the last few moments has had a couple of real rockets that Sobieski's been able to get up to. Here we go. Savage out of the corner. Plays it back to Stankovic. He wants to play one-on-one -on -one and let it go. Here it goes. Blocked by the defense. I tell you, Victor Moreland is so good at knocking down those balls, getting those blocks. We talked about how he was tied for third in the MISL in the regular season. He had 112 on the season. He's not tremendously fast, but he's real quick, and he gets the block on, the, on those shots, and that's what Stankovic is trying to avoid. Well, they're playing the uh, Pointer Sisters on the public address system, one of the few songs I do like that they play here. Tonight, tonight, we're going to make it happen. And that's Wayne Sherman, one of the last biggest fans. Stankovic. Shinapu off the glass. A little bit high. Foul on Baltimore. And the two teams are even at three apiece. The Blast getting good shots on goal. Much better since the halfway point in the second period. To continue that onslaught, they're going to have a chance, but they're in a position where they have to play tough defense, too. Chinapu steals. Up for the ball. Chapman was thinking about breaking, but uh, he did. Chinapu, here's a man open. Savage, he'll shoot. And it's partially deflected and a kind of a knuckleball that Sobieski had to say. It was like Sobieski jumped up and said, wait a minute, it didn't get here yet. The ball kind of squirted over McLeod. Very tough to read. Sobieski luckily didn't overplay it. There's a foul on Savage. And it's nice to see Tattoo picks him up. A great deal of respect between these two players for each other. Let's take a look at the foul. Tattoo over the top of his head, plays the ball. Savage read it beautifully, came in, got called for the foul. Now they're getting a little touchy. Four fouls on the blast. Six minutes, 41 seconds left, third period. You still can see, though, the great respect that these two players have for each other. Savage the best on defense in the league. Tattoo the best on offense. They have fought tooth and nail for every ball and every minute of this series. And yet here we are as time runs down in the season for one of these teams. And they still are helping to pick each up each other up off the floor. I think that's great. Chris, let's go back to the keys of the game we talked about in our stand-up at the beginning of this game. We talked about the forwards, and I definitely thought they had to score for the Blast to win. They haven't scored yet. The Blast is still behind, and I think that's going to have to happen for them to win this game. There's Perfy trying to get the break. Sobieski got the... Aggressive running will do for you. Watch the blast. Pressure Sobieski. Sobieski is caught. He has to come out or stay back. He comes out. Timmy Whitman comes in. Goal! 
Oh, put on the ball. That's all he needed. He'll be asking was in no man's land and didn't get there in time. A great opportunistic goal for the Blast. Let's watch Whitman. Whitman comes down the center of your screen. Just gets a foot on it. Flex Sobieski's shot. Sobieski on the assist. Timmy Whitman on the goal. We criticized Keith Murphy earlier in the game. We must commend him there because it was his hustle which forced Sobieski out of the goal to try and play the ball. So Murphy really helped to make that play work. So just as we take away points from Keith on Dallas's second goal, we give him a point back there for helping to make the play. Keith and Murphy Whitman, has had a tremendous season, Chris. You have to appreciate his play throughout the year. He was the third leading scorer for this Blast team and did everything Kenny Cooper wanted him to do. Long way to go in this one, though. 6-10 left in the period, and there's the foul on Dallas Holding on Doc Lawson, and that's number five. This crowd now getting really involved. Take a look at the foul call. Lawson pushing off. Brady going down low for the kick, but Lawson called for the push, and that'll be the fifth foul on the sidekicks. This place will explode if Dallas picks up that sixth foul, knowing that the Blast would have a power play opportunity to break the tie. And there's a long way to go yet in the period. 5.54, Sobieski chips it all the way into the Dallas bench, and the ball will come back into the Dallas zone. Keith Van Aaron. Goalie for the Blast, who is not playing tonight, waving the towel over at the Blast bench, trying to get the seventh man involved. Every year of the existence of the Blast, they have prided themselves on the seventh man, and that is the crowd that they generate here at the Civic Arena. There he is. Kenny Cooper's going to lose 10 pounds by sweating tonight. He won't mind that. I still have to tell you about the tie. That's not as in score, but as in the tie I'm wearing. You might owe that. Shot chopping. Follow-up attempt no good in the save by Sobieski as Thompson hustled into the box and now Dallas calls timeout. All of a sudden the Blast is putting on excellent pressure. Freddie Thompson came in there, almost got that ball past Sobieski. Sobieski didn't have any chance but happened to be in the right spot for that shot. The Blast has turned around and made opportunity work for them. Let's take a look at that last play. Chapman takes the ball in on the outside target area and bounces it off to Thompson. But look at Dallas. Dallas has two men in there on that reef on that carom shot off the board. They're reading that beautifully. But Freddie got a little bit on it. Went into Sobieski. Still, the score, 2-2. Two to two, And the Blast is generating some activity, but they still haven't had a, con a concentrated offense, Chris, and really gotten anything from that offensive thrust. Kenny Cooper talked at the top of the show about this developing into one of the great rivalries in the MISL. Baltimore's best rivalries have been in the past with San Diego and with Cleveland, the team that they're hoping to get to play next week. Of course, they must win tonight. But this has developed into a marvelous rivalry, capped off by four one-goal playoff games and a game right now in which we have played some uh, 45 minutes to a 2-2 tie. The fans are on their feet. They love it. They expect a lot from this team, as we do. We've seen them play for the last five years to a very high caliber here in the MISL. There's a woman who looks like she was a cheerleader when she was 15, don't you think? Hey, Chris, what are we going to do the looks like contest? I know. We have our special feature uh, each game here on HDS, and that is my theory that everyone in life looks like someone else. Famous, of course. And our crack HDS cameramen have been scanning the crowd here tonight trying to find that perfect one. Here we go, back to play. McKenzie kicks it out to midfield. Maybe a breakaway, maybe a two-on-one. Stankovic on the right, shot, go! That picture tells it all. As the seventh man, the crowd generates all the excitement. Keith Van Aaron being the cheerleader. How about this for picture perfect? Freddie Thompson comes down. He reads Stankovic to his right. He bounces it over to Stankovic. Stankovic set of steps, takes the right foot. And how about that for an all-star shot right up in the left-hand corner? He had to place it perfectly. Yes! Because Sobieski was right there. Let's take another look. Good hustle by Thompson. Chapman pushes it off to Thompson. Thompson comes down. He sees Stankovic to his right. He commits the defense, commit to him. Stankovic takes two steps, spots his mark, and he hits it. 3-2, the blast.
9.37 of the third period. Stankovic from Thompson. Two goals in the span of a minute and eight seconds. And my, oh my, how this is all turned around. Thanks to that goal by McKenzie in the waning seconds of the first half. A goal which pumped life into what had certainly been a moribund Baltimore Blast team. And now with this crowd rising to its feet on every thrust by Baltimore, the subsequent goals by Whitman and then by Stankovic, things have turned so dramatically, and Dallas now is the pensive ball club. Murphy battles in the corner. Look out, Moreland, he's set. Save, Manning! Moreland goes after his own rebound. He'll fire again! And a hand on the ball by Manning as Moreland tried for the far post. How about Victor Moreland? Two great shots, just when you think the blast is generating all the activity. Victor Moreland gives him two shots that could tie the game. And two great saves by Manning. The second might have been better than the first. McWilliams finds Brady on his right. Whitman breaking down the left. Long shot off the boards in front, chipped away by the defense. And a good play by Uremovic. But Stankovic settles. He'll shoot! Off the glass! And it comes back out to the red line. Chinapu battles for the ball. Keep in mind, Dallas with five fouls in the period. Savage now, back to Manning. Crowd on its feet. Thompson out of the box, heads it ahead to Chapman. Nobody in the box to pass to. Andy will have to wait for some help. Outside, Chinapu works on Milano. Here comes the shot, partially deflected in front, chipped away by McCott. Shot, Chinapu up into the crowd. Chinapu with a half volley. That's his shot right there. He had the right foot off to the right of the goalie Sobieski. And I'll tell you, if he hit that thing nine times, Chris is going to make it eight of them. That one was a little high off the glass, but the blast definitely back into a normal field. Until that goal by Stankovic, they really didn't have a good touch to the ball. Let's take a look at the save that Manning does to keep the ball in play for the Blast. Tremendous save from one of the best goalies in the MISL. I still submit that the second save was better because Moreland had the far post zeroed in and Manning got his left hand on the ball just enough to deflect it wide of the post. But nonetheless, two excellent saves by Manning who now has 16 saves on the evening. Three line violation by Dallas, last ball. Stankovic, he's been firing all night, connected a minute ago, shot, saved by Sobieski, kind of routine. Again, we'll bring you up to date on fouls. Five on Dallas, four on Baltimore, 3.34 to go. A penalty here against Dallas could be a backbreaker, giving Baltimore a power play opportunity and total momentum in the game. Milano. Nothing to do there. Passes in the corner. Tattoo against Savage. What a matchup it is. He backs, he backs, he whirls, he shoots. In front, tipped away by Stankovic. Nobody in the box for Dallas. And Thompson now on the left wing. Breaks forwardly. Looks for Chinapu. Brings it to the middle. Slides to Chapman. Shot through the box. Nobody there. As Thompson came whistling through the box to try and connect. Doc Lawson brings it the other way for the sidekick. A great battle here tonight between two of the best in the MISL. Tattoo, and they are two of the best in the MISL. Tattoo and Savage. And Chris, you won't see many double teams. The Blast likes to let Savage go one-on-one -on -one with Tattoo. They feel a double team put them in a disadvantage. Lawson working, Stankovic takes it away. Lawson tries to get it back, no foul. There it is, number five on Baltimore. Well, that could have gone either way for a moment, and then it was obvious once Lawson had beaten Stankovic to position, he reached in and hooked him, oh, and they called the foul. Let's look at this, Chris. I think Stankovic, Mike had the play. Watch, the ball goes down the boards. Mike kind of hooked him there, held him in. If he had positioned himself, he may have gotten away with it. Doesn't matter now, 5-5. Five, five. The next foul will be critical. Who's on the ground here? Stankovic. Stankovic is down. I have no problem with the call at all. I think that once Lawson wheeled around Mike, it was obvious he reached in with the left, grab him, the left arm and grabbed him. Don't forget, Stankovic has been out for weeks, off and on, with this injury to his hamstring, and that's exactly what they're massaging, his left hamstring. Well, this that would be catastrophic for the Blast to lose a player of his quality. That would be just awful, because it took him, what did Mike miss? He missed, I think, 12 games at the end of the season. In fact, 
Kenny Cooper and Stankovic got into a bit of an argument as they came into the playoffs. Kenny felt that Mike was Kenny. well enough to play, and Mike said, yeah. I'll know when I'm ready. Kenny says, look, great players play hurt. Well, and we... Mike said, I'm not playing until I give you all I got. And uh, that's the way it ended up. He's up, he's moving. Hard to say, though, those hamstring injuries can look innocent, but can keep a player from playing. Mike Stankovic. Gordon Jago, is he a cool man? Now, of course, if Kenny Cooper is fire, then Gordon Jago is ice. Let's take a look at Manning's save from behind the goal. Here you are in the goal, Manning. Boom. Boom. Rockets have to get that ball's coming real fast. A lot of well, velocity. Watch, watch the follow-up, though. He'll just get it with the left hand. Moreland, who did a great job getting his own rebound. Manning sprawls, and you can't see it from that angle. But he, read, but he knocked it off just enough to get away from that last fight. Uh, the right post area as Moreland was looking two at Two and a half minutes to go now, uh, Leaf, here in the period. 3-2, blast lead. Lawson out top, blocked away by Furphy. And this is uh, Moreland, or McLeod, blocked away. Back to Moreland. Keep in mind now, the next foul will send someone to the penalty bench. Savage taking the long pass from Sobieski. Now it's laid ahead to Whitman. Whitman shot, trying to catch... Um, Moreland sleeping and he didn't. And now here comes Lawson. Drago out of the box. Thompson takes it away. Drago back the other way. Three on two Baltimore if they hurry. Drago has it chipped away by Moreland. And now they'll come back the other way as Dallas tries to make a line change. Smith. Cross field. Uremovic guarded by Brady. Now he slides it to Stride. A minute 34 to go in the third period. Stride. Very deliberate now, Dallas. They chip it to Tattoo. Savage fell down, but he recovers. Tattoo will try and spin. Shot blocked by Savage. And the ball comes out to McWilliams, who banks it way down the floor as Baltimore looks for a line change. Could have been one of the most important plays of the night right there. Savage fell down, got back up, maintained position, and blocked the shot by Tattoo. Dallas with an opportunity there as Smith felt that he had Manning beaten. Here's Chinnaku coming one-on-one -on, -one on Sobieski. Settles the ball. Will he shoot? Yes, off the boards. Chipped away, and it comes back out. Chapman wheels, fires, and hits a moonshot up into the second deck. Chapman holds his head. He knew he had a great opportunity. When Chinnaku pulled it back, he had a chance to work a coordinated play with Chinnaku. The ball was laid out in front of him. He got under it too much, and the ball, of course, went over the plexiglass. 56 seconds left and the blast looks relaxed. Chris Sobieski, marvelous player for many years in this league. At 36, he might be thinking of other things to do, but this native of Wyskikti, Poland, will be back again next year. And, and when I, you talk about a 36-year-old goalkeeper who played in 43 of 52 regular season games and has played in every minute of regulation play here in these playoffs. It's simply astounding the work that he's done. Savage to Furphy. He tries to get it to Chapman. It'll be settled by Dallas. And McLeod, Harris by Chinapu, lays the long ball to Tattoo. Savage now can't pass to Manning. Slides it up instead to Furphy and ahead to Chapman, who's dropped. No foul. Ball free. 25 seconds left. Scramble in the middle. Whitman chips it up, and it goes into the blast box, and time is stopped with 19 seconds left. Well, Furphy and Whitman were just trying to keep the ball in the offensive area of the field. They don't want to give away a cheap goal. Mike Stankovic is back onto the floor, much to the relief of Blast fans. Fearful that he had re-injured that left hamstring muscle. And now the key here for both teams is it doesn't matter if we don't score. What does matter is, is if somebody commits a foul. That would be deadly at this point. Long kick into the corner. Chinapu goes for it. Moreland open. Shot blocked with the right shoulder by Manning. Comes back outside. Moreland long pass to Yuremovich. Ten seconds left. Shot saved. Scott Manning. Seven seconds left. Dumps it out. Chinapu. They might have a break if they hurry. Three seconds. Chinapu's got on load. It's not going to happen. Time expires. And we're going to get a foul. Wait a minute. I thought we were going to get a foul called in the corner. The referee came running in from the far side. They're just pulling the players apart, actually. But Manning, gutsy play, 10 seconds left, pulled up the pass and made, made his outlet pass, not worrying about stalling for the last 10 seconds. He wanted another offensive opportunity. And the blast back in front, 3-2. Well, after 
After a desultory first half, saved only by a McKenzie goal, 2-1. to one. The Blast scores two goals in the third period to take a 3-2 lead. And that's how we stand as we get ready to go to the final and fourth quarter. The player that scored that first goal for Dallas could have been double teamed, but they could not leave Tattoo alone. Hence, Perfect gets beat one-on-one, -on -one. Manning commits, and a goal by Dallas. Andy Chapman, quiet tonight, wheels, fires in front. I thought it was a score, and so did Stankovich, as he looks heavenward, as if to say, why, Lord? What a nice play by Stankovich. He snuck inside of Mike Powers. Mike Powers was waiting for the deflection, and Stankovich came flying in, knocked the ball just left of the goal. Nothing Sobieski could have said about that one. And there's a guy who knows how to play winning soccer, probably the best all-around player on the Blast team. Well, if Baltimore goes on to lose this one, Mike will see that shot in his dreams. He missed an easy put away late in the fourth quarter in Dallas on Sunday, which could have won the game. And, of course, Dallas went on to win it in overtime. He talked to me tonight earlier about that. But, of course, he's one of the three blast goal scorers tonight, and his goal was the one that's put Baltimore on top. So he's got nothing to apologize for as play is stopped at 13.56 of the final period of the final game of this series between Dallas and Baltimore. We've had two overtime games, every game decided by only a single goal, and uh, there's no reason to expect this one will end up any differently. Every good opportunity is here for an overtime game tonight. So here are the sidekicks facing an uphill struggle now. They've done this before and uh, responded. Not tonight, of course, but they have in the past. Whitman playing Milano tight. Milano gets away. Down in the corner. Look at Whitman battling for every inch on that carpet. Milano still with the ball. Dropped. There's the foul. And Whitman looks at the official. I have to say, come on. We're both going for the ball. I've got position. How can you make the call on me? Well, Timmy was a little upset because he felt the play had been made and made cleanly. Look, he falls down himself. He hits the ball away. And Milano trips over, his own, uh, trips over Whitman's feet. So Whitman had a good beef there. Dangerous moment now for the Blast defense. With the ball just at the right spot outside the penalty box. Murphy, McWilliams, and Whitman trying to shield in the corner. Shot saved, Manning, as McLeod pulled the trigger from the right corner. Milano comes up with the ball at the red line. Chips into the box. Spin shot off the post. Follow-up shot wide. And McLeod shot off the glass. The man, he goes to his hands. Follow-up. Unbelievable series of shots by the Dallas sidekicks. The blast, almost a half a step behind every shot, and Dallas kept popping him on. Scott Manning, the fourth shot, seems to find the mark. Let's watch the whole series again. Constant pressure by Dallas. That one goes beyond Scott Manning's reach. He has to go all the way across the goal to set up. It goes off the boards out high. He never had a chance to get situated. Give credit to the Dallas sidekicks for constant pressure. And we'll give you one more look at it. McLeod starts it. Off the glass. Too high for Manning to really get. Murphy gets there too late. Knocked in bounds by Powers. It comes outside and beautifully scored there by Carpenter, looks like. Second goal tonight. And holy smokes. We're back to a tie situation. I swear, I believe the shot by McLeod went right through Manning's hands. Not over it, but through it. So it's all tied up. As it, well, it should be between these two teams. Nobody expected anything to be easy. McLeod down low on Savage. Spins, turns, blocks. Chapman comes up with the ball. Good job by Savage there that time on McLeod. Now Savage back on tattoo. Stankovic after sitting out a minute or two. Back onto the floor to Thompson. Double team. Freddy chips it. Here comes the Chinapu shot. No. Yes. Shot saved. Right hand Sobieski. Stankovic has it now. Double team. Wants to unload. Does block out of bounds. It'll be last call. Well, every goal has been important. They all are in playoff competition. But the Blast, don't forget, started the first quarter. They got down 2-0. Look at Chinapu with the left foot. And Sobieski came across. Just got the right hand on it. Beautifully placed by Chinapu. And that's what was lacking in his shot in the first four games of the series. He really didn't have the mark. He, wasn't, he was shooting enough, but he wasn't hitting the goal. Time of the goal by Mark Carpoon, 144 here in the fourth period to tie it at three. <laughs> Quickly to recap, Dallas led 2-0, two 2-1. Two Glass scored two goals in the third quarter to go up 3-2. And Dallas has counterattacked with a get-even goal early in the fourth period to bring us to 3-3.
The restart by Chapman through the box, follow up by Chinapu wide, and Uremovic has it. Pounded by Whitman. Chapman trying to screen off Sobieski does. Now Stankovic heads it into the ground. Chinapu's shot was trying to be, or, or Whitman was trying to screen Chinapu's shot, Chris, on that last flurry of offense. He couldn't get out of the way of it in time, actually deflected the ball before it got to Sobieski. I'm wearing a tie tonight. It's a red tie given to me by Kenny Cooper on my birthday three weeks ago. Kenny wears nothing but red ties at all Blast games, and he felt that it would be a good luck tie. I wore it the next night for the Blast loss, 6-1. to one. I brought the tie back tonight, not believing in superstition, but if the Blast loses, this tie is going off the ledge here at the third floor of the Civic Arena. Chris, I made a vow. If the Blast gets behind in the fourth quarter, the tie's going. <laughs> Well, wait a minute, I kind of like this tie. Let's not, get, let's not get premature here. We don't need a losing tie. <laughs> Ties a dime a dozen. Well, I might take it off. How's that? Sobieski plays the ball to Uremovic. Chip forward to Perry Vanderbeck. And he chipped it into the crowd, which, of course, he did not want to do. Vanderbeck, not playing that much this evening, had a rather uneven first half. I, I don't think he played much at all in the third quarter. He's out there now. Tattoo gets a break. So that means Bruce Savage gets a break. And the moment Tattoo re-steps onto the carpet, so will Bruce Savage. 11.52 to go in this decisive fifth game in the Eastern Division semifinals. Last three, Dallas three. And if you're not enjoying this, you just don't like the game. Nice play by Vanderbeck that time as Kirby was breaking into the box. And we're going to have a handball called on McWilliams. Tough call against McWilliams. His back was to the defender when he played that ball. And if I have any beef against the referees, Chris, it's just that. It seems, they be, it seems to me that they're a little inconsistent in the severity of the calls. They're letting some brush moves go, or some severe moves go, and then other brush moves are calling for fouls. Well, that's been the story of this league, the inconsistency of its officials. Yeremovich, McLeod, playing well here in the second half. Shot off the glass. I thought he almost broke the glass. McWilliams chips it forward to a streaking Brady. He can't get it. Spins free. Brady with the ball. Now it's a foot race that Yeremovich wins, and he slides it ahead to Carpen. Loose ball, red line. Smith has it. Man open. Shot save, Manning. McWilliams to the corner. Double team loses it. Foul called Dallas. Well, that was the referee getting even for the last call against McWilliams. And he really took away a great offensive opportunity for Dallas. They were deep in the corner. Nice play, it seemed. The referees took it out of the Dallas sidekick's hands. Gave it back to the blast. Chinapu going to fire. Does. Bounces high in the air. 100 feet in the air and nestles outside the glass. Those boards are so funny, Chris. That had to hit the exact spot that it did. It hit right on the corner of that ledge. Otherwise, it comes back into play at about 60 miles an hour. Hits the ledge, goes out of bounds. Dallas ball. Saves tonight. 20 for the Blast, 13 for Dallas, meaning, of course, Manning and Sobieski, respectively. 10.50 to go here in tonight's game, and it's even at three. Chris, we just saw Richard Chinapu, and if anybody wants to pull it out himself for this team and this crowd, it's Richard Chinapu, first-year captain. Here we go, Tattoo in the shadow. The armadillo in the shadow. Tattoo and Savage. Tattoo shot! Oh, just wide, missing the far post. And a great effort by Tattoo. Tremendous effort. Totally perfect in his aim. Just missed the right post. Chinapu chipped it by Milano. Now it's a foot race. Chinapu wins it. Into the corner, double team. He'll need some help. Poked away, comes out to the red line. Thompson seals off Tattoo. Look at Tattoo play defense. And they call a foul on Tattoo as Thompson goes down. But what great hustle by the league's most explosive offensive performer as he ran all the way back to play defense. Only 10 minutes. Watch Freddie Thompson box him out. Thompson uses his body beautifully. He filled up the whole area, made it impossible for Tattoo, who's a lot smaller, to come in there and play the ball. And he got the foul call. Shot saved by Sobieski as... Once again, Stankovic unloaded a rocket, and now another foul on Dallas. Number three on the sidekick. Shot, Chinapu saves Sobieski. And Milano comes up with the ball. Ahead to Tattoo. Back to Milano as Savage has to retreat. Tattoo in the box now, being guarded by Stankovic. And of course, they want to change that. 
Savage now looking to switch off with Stankovic as McLeod plays the ball and chips it over the glass and out of play. Well, chip it over the glass, but credit that to Andy Chapman. I love the way he pressures that offense. He comes in here and makes the offense move the ball. He pressured Lawson. The ball went back to McLeod. Chapman ran back to McLeod, and it went over the fence. Look at that. Well, Kenny Cooper is trying to console Chinapu, who felt that he should have had a shot. He's trying to find three more of those shots. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, Chinapu, when he shoots, it's a matter of him hitting the post or the goalie because they are rockets, and he's got the rocket back, something he hasn't had the last four games. Chapman, totally quiet tonight. There's been no factor in the blast offense. Has had few opportunities. But he came into this game with three goals. He really has more goals than anybody on the team coming in. Savage tried to play to Furphy. He's thrown away by Vanderbeck. Could be a break. Vanderbeck all the way. Pushes it forward. Save Manning. And Manning comes up looking to throw. Vanderbeck actually had tattoo breaking on his left, but he, he got going, I think, so fast he couldn't catch up to the ball. And how about Bruce Savage? Great hustle. Full tilt all the way back, and maybe he got the benefit of an all-star player when he gave a little bit of a shove coming down and didn't get the call from the ref. You know, in football, they talk about doing 40-yard gassers. Well, that's what a lot of this game is all about, sprinting full, 40 yards or more, up and down the floor. And that's why these shifts only last about a minute and a half. Chapman, triple team, shot, save, Sobieski. Sobieski has been absolutely perfect. Look at the shot wide, and another shot wide. Two from Chapman, one from Brady, all of them missing the mark. Sobieski has been absolutely outstanding in this fourth quarter. Let's watch him right here. Chapman had a screen set up, and he hit for the right post. Nice save. The ball comes back out. Brady keeps it alive, as you can see. And watch Brady with the left foot. Just wide oh. and helped so by Sobieski. And then Chapman again. Sobieski can regain his feet. And if Chapman had a good shot there, that could have been the one. Sobieski, four saves in the quarter, 16 for the game. And right now, he's carrying the emotions of this team and keeping Dallas in it. Well, there seems to be an ebb and flow between these two great goaltenders, Manning and Sobieski. First Manning keeping his team in the game. Sobieski now helping to bring his team back. We have eight and a half minutes to play. It's tied at three. Midfield, ball chipped to the red line, and Yuremovic. He tries to push it forward. Stankovic challenges, doesn't win. Yuremovic has a man. Right side, shot, save, Manning! And it's cleared outside the box to Chinapu. What a save by Manning. Chinapu now, great pass, Stankovic, look out, shot, goal! of the glass team doesn't tell it all. Watch Chinapu. He's going all out. Tired from playing defense. He pushes himself to the extreme. Comes up, feeds it inside to Stankovic. And who better to take the shot from that spot than Mike Stankovic who can go equally well with his right or his left and get a hard shot. Chinapu, perfect feed as he pulls the ball back. Stankovic one-on-one. -on -one. He's got only Victor Moreland to beat. Sets up. You saw Sobieski try to set his feet to get ready for the shot. He wasn't quite, he didn't have his feet on the ground. And Mike Stankovic puts his team back on top. What a tremendous effort from one of the best players in the MISL. And Leif, let's remember that that play really began with a marvelous save by Scott Manning at the other end. Because if Manning makes not that save, it's 4-3 Dallas. Instead, he came up big. And then from there, it was Chinapu sweeping down the field, feeding Stankovic, and Stankovic, who's one of the real great finishers in this league, putting it away. His second goal of the night, his 13th shot, Mike Stankovic, coming out of the pack to lead this team. Goal, Dallas! And just like that, Dallas comes back and shows us that they've got what a championship team is made of. Well, Moreland put it in because the blast defense failed to clear the ball out of the corner. The ball was absolutely dead in front of the goalie and the defense, but they let it stay there for just a split second, and that's all Dallas needed to put it away. And Kenny Cooper is out on the field exhorting his players instead of yelling at him, and Victor Moreland with his second playoff goal just as quickly has gotten Dallas back into the game to even it at 4-4. Again, the ebb and the flow. Things change so quickly in this great game of indoor soccer. It just is a marvelous sport. Unbelievable. Kenny Cooper 
creates a family atmosphere, not only with his players, but he creates that with the fans here in Baltimore. Right now, the yelling's over. He's pulling this family together, and he's saying, we can win, we can do it. You're my team, you're my family, and you've got the ability. Portland from Tattoo, 13 seconds after the blast scored, and Dallas continues, Chris, to show that they've got championship caliber. They have really ro risen a notch or two this year and believe in themselves. There's very little as we look at Gordon Jago, and he expresses some rare emotion on the Dallas bench. There's very little to separate these two teams, quite frankly. At least there certainly has been very little in this playoff series. The total number of goals coming into this game tonight, 15 to 14, only a one goal difference in four games. And now we've played all the way to the 7.56 mark in the fourth period, and they're even at 4-4. And don't forget, whoever wins this game goes into another series, which is only the semifinal series, before they play for the MISL championship. This league is balanced. This league has parity. Milano, look out. Shot. Save Manning as Tattoo came swirling into the box. And a great effort by Manning and an equally wonderful try by Tattoo. Look at the respect that these two teams have for each other. They are down to the last seven minutes of their season. Watch Tattoo. He comes in tight. He tries to deflect that pass, but Manning is there to grab it and pull it in. Both players congratulate themselves for the effort, and these two teams are in a love match of winning championship style. All right, Blast trying to fast break. Chinapu, the man with a big foot, into the corner to Chapman. Outside, Stankovic shot up to the far side of the post. And now it comes out to the side as Thompson can't get it, and Milano comes up with the ball. That's the guy you wanted to shoot, and Stankovic hit a hummer. But it was wide of the mark by about three feet. Now Moreland, who's played a wonderful oh. game tonight for Dallas, heads the ball all the way out to Lawson. Lawson against Stankovic, banks it off the board. Shot in front, blocked away by Thompson. Shot wide of the mark, and Brady comes up with the ball and chips it out past the red line. Give Manning a deflection, Chris. I think Manning got his hand on it. Again, an outstanding save by Scott Manning. Patu, Savage, classic battle right now, one-on-one. -on -one. Tattoo gives it up. Outside, McLeod, shot in front, kick save, Manning, and the ball comes clear. Manning is sacrificing his body. He's all over the goal mouth. He's got to keep Dallas from scoring. Victor Moreland, cross field to McLeod, down into the corner. That's the man they want. Tattoo against Stankovic this time, and a foul on Stankovic in a very dangerous moment coming up for the blast defense. Well, Stankovic got out of position there. Savage was caught on the far side. Stankovic had to pick up Tattoo, and he didn't like that setup, so that when Tattoo went to the board, Stankovic simply held him and said, you're not going to score on me. We'll take the call. Well, Mike not as quick on, on his feet as Savage. And, of course, they say you play defense with your feet. And here we go, as Smith will trigger it. Just outside of box, chips it, shot, block, comes out, shot off the boards, look out! Shot goal, Yaramovich! Dallas again showing that they are not going to wilt under any pressure. Tremendous pressure put on Scott Manning. He's only human. He made the first save. The ball comes out and played beautifully by Yaramovich. Dallas takes the lead, unbelievably, 5-4. to four. The blast again with their backs against the wall. Look at the play, in tight. Nobody picking up Yaramovich as he climbed in and caught Scott Manning flat-footed. Scott Manning had a one-on-one -on -one situation. Very tough to save. Look at this. Brady actually was caught behind Yaramovich as he broke in behind that board play. And ladies and gentlemen, not only does Dallas take the lead, but Chris Thomas just took off his tie. The tie is off. They won't blame it on me. Things are getting serious here at the Civic Arena. 5-4 Dallas, and for Baltimore, its season comes down to six minutes and change. Juramovic from Moreland at 8.43. Two goals now in a minute and 39 seconds by Dallas. Just as Baltimore had struck for two goals in a minute and eight seconds. Mick Williams in the corner stride, matches him stride for stride. Chinapu wanted a crank and couldn't. No foul as McWilliams is dropped. And Dallas with the ball, running hard. Milano on the left, looking for the pass, but it isn't there. Milano's the guy that really made this team knit. Lawson from way outside, and nothing there as it comes barreling off the glass. McWilliams now double-teamed in front of the blast bench, goes down, a foul. That'll be number five on Dallas. Whoa. Wait a minute, they're calling it on. They're going to call it on Baltimore. I thought, sure, with McWilliams' double team, they would call we'll this one look. on Dallas. Here's McWilliams. He comes in yeah. tight and okay. plays from behind against Perry Van Vanderbeck. 
Vandenbeck got the benefit of the call, 4-4. That could be a factor. Five and a half minutes left in the whole season. The blast backs against the wall, must score. And you wonder how long Teddy Cooper can wait before he goes to McKenzie in front. Nothing there. Shot blocked by Furphy. Comes outside to Lawson, chips it to Smith against Chinapu. Look out in front, chipped away by Chinapu. Shot Lawson wide. Comes out to McLeod. And he's going to just, I think, try and chip it backwards as he does to Moreland, who immediately bombs it back into the zone. Now McWilliams lays it ahead to Furphy. Tries to break ahead. And a good sliding tackle by Moreland and a fast break by Carpin. McKenzie back, shot wide, and a follow-up by Moreland. He fanned. Dallas still with the ball, but Smith loses it to McKenzie. 4.40 to go. We're going to get a line change now as Chapman comes on. McWilliams goes off. Stankovic back on the field. They're looking for number three of the night for Mike. Chapman, Whitman to Brady. Chips it to Mike. Here's the big man from Yugoslavia. Moves to his right, to his left. Shot! Blocked by the defense, all the way back inside the red line to Scotty Manning. McLeod came in and cut off the alley again, Chris. They've been doing it all night. Dallas has been anticipating beautifully and taking away the shot from the big guns, namely Stamankovic and Chinapu. Tattoo with the ball now, encircled by three blast defensemen. Waits patiently, as he should, with his team up by a goal and four minutes to go. Now Vanderbeck, as Dallas will try and take some time off the clock. There's no reason for them to rush, not with a one-goal lead. And the next stop of play, I think we may see McKenzie. No question about it. Tattoo now against Brady. That might be a mismatch. Brady trying to put the body on him, and he goes down, and that's the fifth foul on Baltimore. Well, if your back was ever to be against the wall, how about this for a situation? Three minutes, 42 seconds left. You're down by one goal. You only have... You, know, you don't have any chance for foul opportunities. One more foul, you're down by a man. The Blast has to overcome insurmountable odds to win this game. Well, I don't know if they're insurmountable, but they're formidable. Here's the shot. Stride wide of the goal. Dallas still with the ball. They've been controlling it the last two minutes ever since the go-ahead goal. Yeremovich now, crossing pass. Back to midfield, rolled over to Stride, and he chips it all the way back into the zone to Sobieski. Pressure by Whitman. Whitman goes after it. Sobieski's in trouble and tries to get it out. Brady can't get it. And Dallas dodges a bullet. Stankovic now, the big man. 3.14 to go. Double team. Loses the ball. Tattoo there. No. Yes, there's the sixth foul on Baltimore. Stankovic drops tattoo. And now insurmountable might be the proper word. Three minutes left. The blast will be down by one. Let's see what happens to Kenny Cooper's strategy at this point. We'll take a look at Mike Stankovic. He was in a tough spot. He was double teamed. The ball went into Tattoo, and he wanted to get the ball desperately back from Tattoo, who had a clear path into the goal mouth area. Made a lunge for it. Got called for the play. Tough to quit second guess that particular play by Stankovic, but the Blast still finds himself down by one man with only three minutes left. Well, what makes this especially Baltimore has got to put the ball on the net. McKenzie chips it down into the corner, blocked away by Stride, headed back by McKenzie, chipped into the corner to Chapman. Chapman back to Furphy, fans on the ball, kicks it back into the corner to Chapman in front, in the box, and a foul is called on Dallas. And that'll be number five on the sidekicks, and Baltimore will get the ball on a restart here in a very favorable position. Well, we don't have to say that they need to bounce this thing in there real quick. 41 seconds left, they gotta get this fifth goal, so they have some time left to get the sixth. Player substitution by Kenny Cooper. He's trying to get all offense on the field. 41 seconds. Blast. Backs against the wall, no question. Dallas, every right to be very proud of the sidekicks team. And you fans at HSE, I know, are giggling right now. Well, Baltimore will bring out uh, Michael Brady to join Chinapu Furphy. Stankovic, who has had... A big game tonight. Whitman and Chapman will start the play. Now Brady goes off. McKenzie we got a two-minute penalty, Chris. There's a man in the penalty box. The blast will be up. And now the play will be whistled for an early start. But the flat or the, the Dallas sidekicks have a man in the box for, for the final 40 seconds, and that may help the cause as impossible as it seems. Well, you've got six blast offensive players out there right now. And Dallas has got the four defenders packed in front of Sobieski. Chapman will start. 
Lays it out. McKenzie shot blocked and saved by Sobieski, and that might do it. Long pass downfield, picked off by Stankovic. But time now is just about done. Baltimore in. Give McLeod the credit. He turned that one away. Kept it in play for Sobieski. Ball goes out of bounds with 25 seconds left. That might have been Baltimore's greatest shot. At least bring some hope back. But I think the sense of the crowd now is that this one has been lost when Baltimore had a lead 4-3 at home in the fourth period. And there will be a lot of soul searching done by Kenny Cooper during the offseason. What a great start he had in the season. Ended up on just a small bit of a downer when he didn't clinch the title against Cleveland. Went into the playoffs on that little bit of a negative note and couldn't put away Dallas, a team that they thought they should have beaten. 20 seconds left. Dallas content to chip it away. In front, off the post, follow-up goal, and that's the exclamation point on the ball game for Dallas. Hats off to the Dallas sidekicks. McLeod put home that exclamation point, as Chris called it, and that's exactly what it is. This team has done everything they were supposed to do to be a championship team. The one thing you went into this game knowing that they didn't have any experience, you thought the Blast would call on its experience. It was Dallas that looked to be the experienced team. And watch this, it bounces off the boards, comes over to McLeod, McLeod takes a shot. A little left footer, and of course, with the Blast pushing on the offense. Nobody home. Season's over for the Baltimore Blast, and you talked about the soul searching, Chris. Kenny Cooper started off with uh, almost a record number of wins. I think it was eight wins in a row. The team looked tremendous. It was totally remade. A lot of new faces. And to end on this note is absolutely a turnaround that he will have a tough time living with. Well, on the other hand, uh, Kenny Cooper took a chance on playing rookies. And it was very successful as the team. I don't think he'll say it was the rookies that didn't get him into this next playoff. I think he's going to look at the veterans who didn't yeah. do it. Guys like Drago, who he took off the field when he didn't produce, when he had to produce. We talked about the forward line needing to put the goals in today to win. Stankovic stepped forward. He did what he should have done for a player of his caliber. When you look at Chinapu, he had a lot of great shots. I don't know if you can fault a guy for all the shots he took. He just didn't hit the goal. He had a lot of good effort there. But a couple other players didn't quite do what they were supposed to do as veterans, and Kenny Cooper is going to have to reevaluate his team. Very frustrating end for the Baltimore Blast as their season ends for the second straight year with a loss in the first round of the playoffs. But a happy Gordon Jago and a happy Dallas team as they have won tonight's game by a score of 7-4. to four. We'll be back in a moment. It was so simple, really. A direct electrical charge here heats up the carbonized filament here, which in turn excites the gases trapped in here. And voila! Well, it's very nice, Thomas. But I wanted a Bud Light. If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Don't feel bad, Thomas. It's not a complete loss. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Plus season turned into one giant pumpkin. The final score, Dallas 7. Baltimore 4, and for you Sidekicks fans, after a trek into Cleveland for games 1 and 2 on Saturday and Sunday this week, it's back to Reunion Arena for games 3 and games 4 on uh, of next week. And uh, good luck to the Dallas Sidekicks, Lee Felsmo. I think the footnote on the blast season will be that this was a team that came maybe farther than many expected it would, but at the end uh, failed to fulfill its promise. Well, and that was the question mark Kenny Cooper had, and he has of many of his players. He said you can play a good season, you can play in a lot of opportunities and do well. A very rare few can play well when you've got to play well, and I think that's what he will evaluate on this team. He'll take individuals, evaluate their performance when they had to do it for him, who did, who didn't. But again, as my footnote, I want to say that this indoor soccer game and the blast in particular what better show could you want what closer series could you want and I think that's what it's all about it's a great sport it was great entertainment and this series gave you everything in every game it wasn't a dull game here every moment was great and it was worth every penny to be here and to enjoy the blast through this season as a quick recap the blast had a 4-3 lead uh, fairly early in the fourth quarter could not sustain it as Dallas unleashed an avalanche of goals past Scott Manning to win 7-4. That will do it from the Civic Center in Baltimore, Maryland, where once again our final score is Dallas 7 and the Blast 4. Tonight's, tonight's game was brought to you by Stroh's and Stroh's Light. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here.
and by All-Star Dodge. At five area locations with over 1,500 Chevrolets, Chryslers, Plymouths, and Dodges at super discounted prices. Tonight's game was directed by Daryl Boom Boom Landrum. And produced by none other than George Johnson. The executive producer of Home Team Sports is Jody Shapiro. Chris Thomas for Leif Elsmo. Once again, our final score at the Baltimore Arena is Dallas 7, Baltimore 4. Coming up later tonight, it's post time from Pimlico with your host, Bob Smith. The final once again, and a good night from Baltimore. Dallas 7, Baltimore 4. This has been an exclusive presentation of Home Team Sports.